what else? I'm sorry. I'm in a fucked up mood because I saw yet another thing happen to a comedian where it's just like it's accusations and then people just like sign off on it before the person can even defend themselves. Now, I mean, I, and then you're just sitting there going like, were you there? Aren't you like me? Like, I have no idea if this is true. I have no idea if this happened. I don't know if it didn't happen. I just know there's some people saying something happened. And then my favorite, my favorite fucking thing is the bitter ass comic. You know what I mean? Who uses that situation as an excuse to air their personal feelings about that comedian's act. I mean, how fucking low can you go? Jesus Christ, the fuck, you, somebody's laying on the side of the fucking road. For all you know, could be in, innocent, and you take the time to be like, you know, it, it's always like, you know, I can't believe this fucking guy, blah, 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 the shit they've just been accused about, and then there's some sort of criticism about the act. I thought his biggest crime was that he was called a comedian. It's just like, wow. Wow. What kind of fucking person are you? What kind of fucking person are you that you take a fucking, that you'd use, you know, people are trying to suggest it's a sexual assault happened here. And you're going to use that platform so you can get out your fucking bitterness about where your fucking career is at. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. So this person actually made a video. And in the video, you know, the part that I love is they're fucking sitting there saying how the, there are people around him were advising him to not say anything. Just let the news cycle pass. It's just like, it, 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 I don't understand why the accused person can't defend themselves. It's, it's fucking nuts. And I don't get how all of these people are signing off like, yeah, this makes sense. This seems like the right solution for this. So I'm actually, you know, happy the person ignored it and actually made a video. And hopefully people will start doing that again and due process will return. And hopefully this time, due process will actually work for victims if they were actually victims. I mean, isn't that the logical way you should be looking at this rather than just being like, somebody said something happened. All right, that's it. That means it happened. Hey, I'd like to defend myself. No, you shut the fuck up. All I need to hear is an accusation. I don't need any fucking evidence whatsoever. Um... <clears throat> Blows my fucking mind. I understand regular fucking people. They're bored right now. They're in the middle of a fucking pandemic. So, yeah, throw someone to the lines for my fucking entertainment. But to see fellow comedians jumping on this shit, um, and you want to be like, oh, so evidently you were there? You know, or did some, I don't know what fucking evidence you have that makes you that fuck. But what it really comes down to, I then fucking see, is it always comes down to, they then, they don't like him as a comedian. Um, Jesus, what a complete fucking piece of shit person that you would do that to somebody, you know? Not saying whether the person accused is innocent or guilty, because I have no fucking idea. Um, you know, that's why you have a fucking trial. All right, let's do a little bit of reads here. Let's do some reads. I, it's just unbelievable that, you, you, that in America you have to actually be careful when you're not even being serious. You're joking around and you have to be careful. It's just the f most fucked up thing. Oh, people, there is so much shit that I could say and so many names that I could say, but I would just never do that. I just think comedian on comedian fucking attacking this cannibalism just has to fucking stop. Um, I don't know. So maybe I shouldn't even have joked around and said white female comics. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, um, guest in own home. All right, here we go. Hey, Bill, I hear you on the wife feeling like you're a guest in your own home. I'm an airline pilot and have been home way more than ever, which I took as a good thing, but apparently I'm screwing up her and the kids routine. I just keep biting my tongue thinking what the routine would be like if someone wasn't off working to pay for all this shit. <laughs> 
rant over. Love the podcast. Stand up and F is for family. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Yeah, I mean, you got, you need to understand her and she needs to understand you. Because, like, um, I always see, like, with professional uh, sports athletes, right? Professional athletes. Um, they pr- provide an amazing, obviously, lifestyle for everybody to be living. But then, like, they're not home a lot. So what happens is everybody gets into this fucking groove that doesn't involve you. And then all of a sudden you come home and then, yeah, you do disrupt it. So, uh, yeah. So there's that weird thing that she is right, that you are disrupting the routine, but you know, it would be nice if she also acknowledged that you're paying for the routine. Uh, but that's not how it works. You know, I found that when you, when you actually make a good point with the woman, that automatically means that you just somehow threw something in their face rather than you brought up a point to defend your own position. Well, you don't need to throw it in my face. I didn't throw anything. I just said it. Trying to give you a little bit of perspective. It sounds to me like you on some level think what I just made was a great point and you can't really refute it. So now what you're going to do is act like I was, uh, that somehow by me bringing up a great point to shine a light on my position is somehow being rude to you. Am I supposed to just sit here and be a fucking punching bag? Um, that is fucking amazing that you're a fucking airline pilot. So you probably have like 300 people's lives in the palm of your hand for the better part of anywhere from three to six hours. And you have to handle that. You have to fly instrument every fucking flight, right? Anything above, oh my God, I already forget. Anything above 18,000 feet, I think you, you automatically fly instrument. Um, I don't know, but I'm back into flying, baby. I'm flying twice a week, and I wish I was flying three times a week. Um, my auto rotations are getting really, really good. Last time I flew, um, I was really working on that last part of it where I don't bring the nose up, you know, and make my RPMs go up and I lose my airspeed to stay level and just wait to do that, that flare, um, once I get that down, once I get that down, then there's the last little part, just leveling out and pulling power right before you set, settle down onto the ground. Um, I had a, did a great flight, went out to the Camarillo Airport um, the last time, and I used this four-flight app that I, I literally sat down and I watched this guy give like a, an hour and seven-minute instructional thing on, and now I, I get it. And one of my favorite things about the app is they actually have a 3D picture of whatever airport. So if you're not familiar with the airport, you can actually look and get a a, a 3D visual of what the approach is going to look like. Uh, You combine that with the map of the airport, and then you you take an airport that you were totally unfamiliar with. Um, I would never say that I'm familiar now because I hadn't gone to it before, or hadn't gone to it in a while, but you're just so much, you have this picture in your head, you got all the uh, taxiways and everything, you know, the runways, and you got the whole fucking layout, and um, I actually feel confident now, because that's one of the ones that's really busy a lot, and uh, I would get anxiety when I would come in there, because you want to talk quickly, you don't want to step on anybody, and you don't want to have to have the tower repeat anything to you. So what I would normally do is just transition, which means I would just ask to fly through their airspace, which is the easiest thing. Um, but this past time, I actually did some pad work at the North Pad that they they have there or whatever. And um, I had a great time. Although I, I got a little frustrated with some stuff. What I'm really learning is it's just like drumming, is that you know I've really been like holding on too tight with the controls. Is you want to be like, the looser you are, the more information you can take in as far as like what the helicopter is telling you um most importantly which way the wind's coming from and i started to do that last time because i had a couple you know i came back it was, it was just like the first times i soloed where i would go into the downwind and all of a sudden the fucking low rpm horn would come on and i think oh my god i'm having a fucking engine failure and it was just because i was gripping the throttle too tightly and i was overriding the governor and uh, I did that a couple of times, so I really had to think about it. But, like, 
all my instructors have always said you're going to be like with your feet on the pedals to have all your weight like on your heels, like super light. And when you're pushing down either your left or your right foot, the other foot is not even touching the, um, it's barely touching, I should say, the other pedal. And um, I don't know, you you just want to like, because I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know, the, the more nervous you are, the less comfortable you are, the more rusty you are, just the tighter you're holding onto that thing. And then exactly what you don't want to do which is fight the thing ends up fucking happening. And it's the same thing as like playing some drum lick that's super fucking fast is if you tense up, it just all goes to shit. So um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm flying a couple times a week. I'd like to fly three. Three would be fucking huge for me as far as, um, you know, because it always ends up being like a three, four day layoff as opposed to like if I flew every other day, how good I could get would be awesome. So, um, but I also have responsibilities here at home so we'll figure it out anyway i read that one okay aging out of moto gp uh helly hey hey there billy uh burquez instead of marquez love your stuff yada yada what makes rossi's age impressive is okay so valentino rossi is like 41 years old and he's still competing at uh the highest level in motorcycle racing in the world and he gets on the podium still like once a season or so. Um, so I was like, well, you know, it is the machine and all that. What is, what is it about his age? Why is it so hard to keep riding at his age? Does your body break down? Um, taking all those G's, obviously falling off the bike and shit. So anyways, the person says, Hey, the usual stuff that a lot of at this is what makes it impressive. The usual stuff that a lot of athletes go through injuries that build up over the years, senses not being as sharp as they used to be. I didn't think of that getting tired of the travel in the media circus, but also B, since he started riding in the lower classes in 1996. It's incredible. Uh, there have been endless changes to the rules regarding tires, electronics, engine sizes, and tracks coming and going from the calendar. Yeah, that's like a Belichick thing, like how you're successful for that long because usually you win a couple Super Bowls, all the other coaches break down what you're doing and totally steal what it is that works. Um, Indianapolis Colts. Uh, C, uh, in MotoGP right now, there's an insane amount of young talent coming through the lower ranks. Uh, Fabio, that's uh, Quattararo, was 19 when he entered the top class. He won the Junior World Championship, the class below Moto2 in Moto3, twice in a row at age 13. Oh, that'd be fucking cool to watch. Can you watch that anyway? I would love to see 13-year-old kids, future stars, fucking ripping it up. Um, you won at age 13 and 14. Mark Marquez was one of the youngest world champions ever in 2013 at the age of 20. He won the MotoGP thing. Uh, it isn't that riding at his age is impressive. Uh, the top Isle of Man TT riders are 30, 40, 48, and 51, and that shit is crazy. What's impressive is that he's been able to adapt to the changes in bikes, tires, and riding styles over the years while staying competitive with the younger guys. Cheers, Come to Japan sometime and go fuck yourself. Oh, I'd love to go to Japan. And one of my favorite riders, I already forget his name because I'm new to the sport, is a great Japanese rider in MotoGP who had an incredible race, I think the first one. Um, it's always good to see new blood coming up in the ranks. Um, yeah, Japan is definitely, definitely on the list. Um, I got to make that happen, obviously, when it's when we go back to the old normal. Um, anyway, all right. Guys who won't let you split the check. Oh, wait, there's a great documentary too out there about um, the year Mark, uh, sorry, Valentino Rossi switched from Honda to I think he went to Yamaha or Suzuki. I think it was Yamaha. So, um, you know, he was he was winning and he was just the shit and he was riding for Honda which is like Lewis Hamilton, who's the shit, and he's driving for Mercedes. So there's a lot of critics of F1 who are saying, you know, Lewis Hamilton wouldn't be as nearly dominant if he was driving for somebody else because Mercedes is the best. And then it's also like, well, Lewis Hamilton is also the best. So Mercedes wouldn't be winning at the same clip, you know? And I think both Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton would obviously agree to that, right? Well, the, d the dumbasses at Honda... In early, uh, this is funny, after I just gave a shout-out to Japan. Um, 
I'm not saying they're still dumbasses, but they made a dumbass move where I guess Valentino Rossi was getting too much fucking credit, they felt, and they said, hey, it's not just the rider, it's also the bike. They made some, they alluded to something that, well, he is driving, riding a Honda. So that pissed off Valentino Rossi, and he switched to Yamaha, and everybody thought he was nuts because I guess Yamaha, whoever the fuck he switched to, wasn't um, winning shit. And not only did he go over there and made, immediately made them a winner, he won the championship the very next year, which from what I can tell is unheard of. Having what little I know, watching F1 and watching an, an amazing driver like Daniel Ricciardo, you know, switch from Red Bull team to uh, who the fuck is he with now? I forget who he's with. He was with Renault last year, and this year I think he switched again. And... um you know, it's, it's, it's literally like football where if you like one of the worst things to be is the top QB prospect in a draft. Cause you're going to go to some shit fucking team with no offensive line. And then people, how the, uh, who knows how good you could have been if you were maybe the third ranked guy and you actually went to a competitive team that had an offensive line with an older quarterback and they worked you in, you know, and you had a good quarterback coach. You didn't have fucking a new QB coach every fucking year. Um, like happens to a lot of people out here. So that really is interesting. Anyways, all right. Guys who won't let you split the check. Uh, what's up, Bill? Love the podcast. Okay, one thing that I find extremely annoying is the, the guys have to pay convention on dates. I'm in college and the guys I date are in college. So I know that neither of us having that much money... Neither one of us had that much money to spare. It seems kind of fucked up to me that being in a relationship is like a money-saving tool for women and a huge financial burden for men. Uh, Yeah, I would say that. I think it was that way back in the day because women weren't allowed to work. And then also, once you married a guy, like he could fucking lord over you when you were like his property. So to, to... you couldn't even vote. I mean, to try and balance it out somehow is you had to go out and go buy, buy the sarsaparillas. Um, anyway, some guys are animate, adamant about paying for dates. I always was. Even when you're sincerely, sincerely offering to split. Parentheses, not some fake. Oh, my God, no, you don't have to do that bullshit. All right, is this like the coolest chick ever? She wants to pay. She's owning up to the fact that chicks do shit like that. All right, which then this is what I wish happened in politics. So they wouldn't be screaming and yelling where you could just be like, uh, hey, you know, oh, you know, Obama fucking drone bombed some weddings and, uh, you know, he kind of blew the oil companies. OK, I can definitely give you that. You know, having said that, you know, this guy Trump's a little out of line here. Um, you know, then you could actually maybe have a fucking conversation. Instead of screaming at some old lady because she's not wearing a fucking mask. She's going to be dead soon. Just leave her alone. Uh, anyways, which also puts me in a weird spot because it feels like since they bought me bought my meal, now I owe them sex. Yes. Like prostitution, but with food as an uh, intermediate step. All that considered, what do you say to a dude to actually convince him to let you pay for yourself? Um... I don't know what you say, because th- that's a weird thing. That's got to be a weird thing for a woman where a guy insists to pay, because then you got to be sitting there going like, all right, what do I have on my hands here? Do I have an old school gentleman who's going to take his coat off and let me step on it as he walks over a mud puddle, whatever the fuck that is? Um, or do I have somebody that's going to be shoving their dick in my face because they paid for my fucking uh, steamed spinach here? I mean, that's a hell of a thing. Hey, that's see. This is why I wish more women wrote in on this fucking podcast. Well, Bill, maybe if you didn't trash them every 10 seconds, they'd they'd fucking listen to this shit. Uh, Fair enough. Um, Yeah, because that's interesting that then you're going to be sitting there being like, okay, I'll let you pay for this. But, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, (laughs) you can take old Hank out in fucking 20 minutes when we're back in your Prius. Um yeah, I, I just I would tell you this at this point, um, <clears throat> uh, the way things are now, I, I would be terrified as a young guy out there as far as just like, all right, 
You know, you, I, I'll tell you this to all the young guys out there. If you even get a hint of vindictiveness or craziness, you, you got you to gotta just fucking walk away. Like De Niro and Heat. You just got to stand up and just fucking, you just fucking walk. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. And then women, I don't know. You got to come up with some sort of fucking, uh, it's gotta be, there's got to be some sort of, well, that doesn't really work if the guy's a monster. I don't know. There's really no solution because human beings, male and female, are just inherently fucking flawed. Um, I will say to women out there, young women out there that are dating and all that shit, you know, there's plenty of fucking dojos out there where you could learn some fucking grappling and jujitsu. I mean, that's my thing. I really think every fucking woman on, uh, should learn how to do that shit. Uh, then they probably abuse that power too. But, you know, whatever. I'm just saying. Like, you could fucking... You know, when somebody is going to sexually assault you, they got to get in close. All right? So if you're good at fighting on your back and you can put that person in an arm bar and there's no ref to tap out, you fucking blow out his elbow. That's it. Nothing kills a hard on like a broken fucking arm. <laughs> or just put him in a triangle. I mean, I got to tell you, I would think no matter how much a guy outweighs you, once you, I mean, I, I, you know what, I shouldn't say that. I, I should ask Rogan this, but like, at what level belt, okay, does weight class not matter if the other person has no grappling skills whatsoever, has no idea like, oh, fuck, they just did that, which means in another half a second, I'm going to be in a triangle or an arm bar unless I do this. <clears throat> I just think that would put you at like a tremendous, tremendous fucking advantage. Um, that's something I really want to do, uh, you know, with my kids. I hope my, uh, I hope that, you know, these fucking, this thing ends soon and you can just teach your kids how to, you know, defend themselves against, you know, psychos in life. And then you just teach them, like, never abuse this power and all that shit, which I think is part of the dojo's responsibility down there. But I, I would definitely say that. Okay, hey, now you know how to choke people out. Just don't go fucking walking around choking people out. Um, that's another thing, too. What if you knew your kid was a psycho? Do you then fucking let him learn how to do that? You can't have some Cobra Kai kid. Jesus, it's a fucking quagmire. All right, father-in-law offers car. <clears throat> uh, dear Billies are us. Congrats on baby number two. Thank you. Um, he is amazing, by the way. He is amazing. And watching my daughter interact with him is just one of the coolest things ever. She's head over heels for him. It's so awesome. Uh, anyways, I'm 30 years old and just married the woman of my dreams. Congratulations. She loves the outdoors, is dro a drop-dead 10, and is in residency to become a surgeon to boot. Dude, you fucking hit the lottery. I work in the nonprofit sector and, and loved it, but was unfortunately laid off due to COVID. Sorry to hear that. I haven't owned a car for ages because I live in a PNW city with great public transportation. What is a PNW city? What in the fuck does that mean? That, like, I'm supposed to know that? PNW meaning. It says PNW serial killers? Oh, so Pacific Northwest. That's hilarious that I just looked up PNW and immediately said fucking serial killers. All right. Pacific Northwest city with great public transportation and protected bike lanes. Don't worry. I'm a biker who stops at stop signs and I don't wear that silly spandex shit. Dude, I love a bike lane. I wish they actually had them here in L.A. instead of spray painting bicycles on the street. Um, and like, there's your bike lane. New York City has some great bike lanes where you're on the other side of parked cars. I mean, it's fucking amazing. Jersey barriers and all of that shit. Anyways, my new father-in-law reached out and has offered his 2002 Lexus with 130,000 miles on it for just below Kelly Blue Book value. It's a good deal, but I worry he might hold it over my head in some strange way. We haven't always gotten along for a few reasons. He's an asshole he talks down to my wife. He believes if you aren't furthering science, you're not wor really working. Do I buy it? Fuck no. 
Thanks, and I hope the family is doing well. No, fuck this guy. If what you're saying about this guy, he's an asshole. He talks down to my wife. No, fuck this guy. For all you know, this, this is the type of guy, if what you're saying about him is true, there's something wrong with the car. You know, and I had a buddy of mine, I remember a long time ago, way back in the fucking day, a buddy of mine when I was a kid, uh, he bought a BMW off a doctor. And we were kids, man. When I say kids, we were still, you know, teens, early 20, 20s. And he sold it to my buddy. And I remember we were driving home. I saw this blue smoke coming out the, a couple times out of the back. And I was like, all right, it's burning a little oil, whatever. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, it just started sitting weird in the back. And uh, finally, a buddy of ours knew about cars. He put it up on the fucking the lift there. And they saw that it had been in a major fucking accident and the frame had been bent. And this guy didn't disclose any of that. So the fact that this guy is a scientist, um, you know, and I, you know, it's in defense of him in this time, if you aren't furthering science as far as working on a cure of COVID, I mean, it's probably the most important work right now as far as the world economy goes. But uh, I would not do that. I wouldn't do it. I, if you know, if you got money to buy a used car, I would buy something else somewhere else. Um, yeah, yeah, that's definitely what. I, fuck it. You don't. You don't want that guy getting in any clothes. You got to. You got to keep a guy like that at at arm's distance. I really believe that. You, you're cordial. You have to respect that. That is the the, the father of the woman that you're going to marry and all of this shit, or that you married or whatever. Um, you know. So you always got to be respectful. Hello, goodbye. But you don't got to let him in. Um, all right. Worried about college. Okay. Hey, Bill, I love the MMP and I've watched your Conan appearances at least a million times. Oh, thank you. Conan's the best. Uh, I'm a 17 year old girl and I'll be a junior at the university of Florida. All right. Go Gators by the end of 2020. Go Gators. She writes, um, I took a ton of, of advanced lesson classes in high school and now I'm three years ahead. What? I'm a 17-year-old girl. I'll be a junior. She's crushing it. At first, I thought this was great. The faster I start school, the faster I finish, right? I didn't want to waste my entire youth slaving over textbooks. My issue is that I've been so focused on academics that I lost out on a lot of the experiences my friends were having in high school. I didn't go to parties, prom, homecoming, football games, or even my graduation ceremony. I'll stress that this wasn't because of my parents. I'm just insanely introverted, and none of these things seemed appealing. Well, I can relate because I didn't go to most of those things either. Um, Now I'm basically a socially awkward weirdo, and I'm worried I'll be 50 uh, before I even have my first kiss. Everyone says college is the best time of their life, so how do I put myself out there so that I can make some friends and maybe even find a special fella? Ah, that's adorable. Thanks. And I think it's pretty mean that people are always telling you to go fuck yourself. Look at you. You got a good heart. You're motivated. I'll tell you this right now. You're a catch and a half. All right. So any guy's going to be lucky to be with you. So I was totally introverted. You just have to like, you got to forgive yourself and not beat yourself up that you're introverted and that you're shy. So just to start putting yourself out there, baby steps. You know, what about Bob? Just baby steps your way out there and gradually, you know, open up. You know, if you don't speak up in class, just say, all right, I'm going to answer one question today and I'm going to get over that. And I mean, that's how I did it. Now I baby stepped my way into being a comedian. I started any opportunity I had to take a public, perf- any, any class that I knew where I was going to have to stand up and speak in front of the class, I would do it. And um, once I made that decision, um, I started to have, you know, I allowed myself to be not good at it. I allowed myself to be embarrassed, get dry mouth and all of that stuff. Once I was just like, okay, all this stuff's going to happen and all of this stuff is normal because of the way I'm wired. I just need to to move the ball an inch in the direction I want to go every day, right? And once I did that, I, I, I grew by leaps and bounds as far as like my confidence. So this is something that is, um, is a great thing that you can work on and it's totally fixable. 
And then also, uh, just start going to some Florida Gator games. You know, I heard the SEC might have some games this year. Just go to the games. Um, put it out there that you want to go to the games, but you need a crew to go with. You'll fall in with some people. Now, here's the thing. Considering you've been introverted and all that, I'm a little worried that you're going to fall in, you know, with some, you know. Nah, I'm not worried. You know what? You're going to. Here's the thing. Just go with your gut when it comes with friends, all right? If you're feeling that you, the people you're with are cool and they're good people and you're clicking with them, continue to hang out with them. If if they're not, don't be afraid to fucking move on. Um, it's no different than being in a relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend with somebody, you know? it's You just got to listen to your gut. So there you go. So congratulations. You'll be fine. Um, all right, Rambo Helicopter. Bill. With your knowledge and understanding of helicopters, yeah, pretty limited, uh, what's your take on helicopter scenes in Rambos, in the Rambos? Well, I always loved them, obviously. Um, This is what I'll say about, not specifically Rambo, I'll just say in general in movies, is when somebody's getting chased and then they run over and just start, they start up a helicopter like it's a fucking car and then they just drive away, um... That's the fucking most hilarious thing, especially if it's like a turbine engine, like a jet engine. Like, you know, there's a whole startup procedure that I've watched. You should check it out. Look up uh, A-Star 350 startup procedure. And there's a thing when you go to start it up where the engine is heating up and uh, it gets up to a certain temperature like 700 degrees, and then you have to back it down or something like that, roll down the throttle uh, for a few seconds before rolling it back up, or you could actually burn down the fucking helicopter. You could actually have a fire because of what's going on in the background. Um, So whenever I watch one of these movies and somebody gets in, even if you fly what I fly, there's a whole startup procedure, especially if the fucking engine is is like ice cold and... um, you know, you got to let the belts roll up. You got to let, you know, you roll up the power. They got attention. The, the, the clutch light has to come out. There's a whole startup. Perce- I mean, you can just, you can fucking do it. I guess you could just do it. It's not good for the engine or anything else. And I would be nervous about that. But I guess, you know, if my option was getting eaten by fucking zombies. Um, but even then, it takes a little bit for it to roll up to fucking speed. That That's my only issue about it. And then also, whenever they shoot out the fucking tail rotor and then the person just spins and spins and spins and spins and spins, you know, any helicopter pilot, unless they were brand new, the second you start spinning is you, you roll down to the detent is what they call it. So then it's basically like putting it in neutral. So now what's keeping the main rotor turning is the ship falling rather than uh, the torque of the engine. So... Whatever you've, you've rolled down to neutral, so neither one of those the the um, the tail rotor not working now, and the main rotor still spinning. You're not dealing with the uh, the engine turning that anymore. So there's no torque wanting to turn the the ship in the opposite direction that the main rotor is turning. Jesus Christ! So yeah, you would roll down, and then with your pedals, what you had left from the oh wait, what if they shot oh, wait no they shot it out. So then you don't have that. Maybe you would. I don't know. I've never had my tail rotor shot out. Um. So anyway, it's just, you know, you know what? I talked long enough that you ended up learning how li- what little I know about fucking helicopters. I know more than the average person, but I don't know shit. And that is a great way to go up in life. Just know you don't know shit because then you'll be open to learn new shit. By the way, uh, Mrs. Jones was written by a guy named, uh, or was performed, I should say, by Billy Paul. Um, and I actually went down a rabbit hole listening to that guy. And I learned about some other singers that I had never heard of. Like if you Google Billy Paul, he ends up, he talks about the um, singers that he was influenced by. And what's really cool is it's really a lot of female singers because he feels that they did more with their voices, which I thought was really interesting. And then he brought up this guy. uh, Shit, where the hell is he? Let's see here. Nina Simone, Johnny Mathis, the Elder Style, Silkiness. Um, and then there was a guy, Jesse Belvin. He said, one of my favorites, they used to call him Mr. Easy, Jesse Belvin. And this guy helped write Earth Angel. 
And unfortunately, he did a show in Arkansas. He was died when he was 27. Got into a head-on uh, collision in a car. And back then, you know, those cars were just, you know, the engine just went right into your fucking chest. Uh, had a head-on collision and died, unfortunately, at 27. Super talented kid. Um, he did a, a mixed-race show. Him and another, I think, uh, African-American act. And these old racist white dudes showed up. Yelled a bunch of shit at the stage, which you know was the N-word and a bunch of other ugly shit. And then were kept pleading with the white kids to get up and leave. And um, there's a theory that he had his tires slashed. And that's what caused the accident. And if that's fucking true, man, what kind of a fucking human being could do that to somebody? Like, and feel no guilt about it. And at the end of their life... You know, if you have belie- have any sort of belief in any sort of a high power, not think that you're going fucking directly to hell for that one. Um, fucking brutal. So, I don't know. I got to tell you, I wish I was better at writing scripts because to me, that's like, there's a fucking movie and a half there. Like, what happened? Like, no, no investigation? Just, I don't know. How the fuck did they figure out all these years later? Or did people know back then that it was possibly the tires were... Slash, I don't know, there's maybe something to possibly look up. Jesse Belvin, J-E-S-S-E-B-E-L-V-I-N. Um, all right, that's the podcast, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, it's so great that sports are back. Hey, Billy Big Bullocks. Uh, Billy Freckled Bullocks, correction. Thought I'd share a couple of Napoleon facts. A little smiley face. One, did you know that Napoleon was the average height for a European those days? No, I didn't. That's fucking great to know. So he wasn't really short, so it had nothing to do with any of that. So evidently, everybody else got taller than over the years thought that he was a shorter guy. Seven wars were declared on Napoleon, not so much a warmonger. Yeah, but you got to think if seven people declare war on you at some point, it's like, what am I doing? Right? Anyway. A large chunk of current slash existing European laws were created during Napoleon's administration. Four, it was, um, it was East, it, it really was East India Company versus Napoleon. The company had a standing army of 200,000, twice of the British army. This is all vague shit, dude. I don't know what any of this is. Also, it was in Boston that, East India Company tea was dumped into the sea that sparked another conflict. Well, it seems to me that you're you're French on some level, or you like Napoleon, or you're a contrarian, because everybody said this little shit started a lot of stuff. Let me see. Napoleon was average height. He was 5'6". Yeah, but George Washington was 6'2", Louis XVI was 6'4", and Adolf Hitler was 5'9". George Washington was 6'2"? Get the fuck out of here. He was like a power forward back then. 6'2", 6'3", with the powdered wig. Huh? Any Fletch fans out there? Uh, people who ask, all right, uh, was Napoleon actually short? Um, in fact, he was probably of average height. According to pre-metric system, French measures, he was a diminutive 5'2", but the French inch pounce of the time was 2.7 uh, centimeters, while the imperial inch was 2.54. Oh, so he was actually taller. Napoleon's height revealed. But if Napoleon was of average height, the easy psychology doesn't work for him. Yeah, exactly. They made it nice and simple. He was this short fucker, right? Who came up with that, man? That's like that's like some ex-girlfriend shit. You know, he's short, he's got a little dick, that's why he's a fucking cunt, you know, the, those basic, you know, here to here to here, you know. <laughs> this, then this equals that. Um, that's actually very interesting. I don't know anything about the East India Company. What is the East India Company? Let's look that up. East India Company. East India Company, also known as the Honorable East, the H-E-I-C. What did they do? 
Uh, it was formed. Does it still exist? Yes, it does. Founded in 1600. Oh, defunct, 1874. My fault. I read that wrong. Wow, what a run, huh? 274 years. Crushing it. What ended it? Is that when the British took over their fucking country? Is that what happened? English Education Act. Oh, Jesus. I don't know. I don't know. England's like the, the original Andy Cohen's of the world. You know, you know, that guy gets all those real housewives all stirred up. It's like England did that before Andy Cohen, except they did it with countries and races of people. <laughs> <laughs> all Andy Cohen's doing is just getting a couple of fucking housewives. To, you know, he gets their blood up a little bit. That's my favorite fucking thing to watch. When he, now, Karen, when... I can't say Karen anymore because that actually means something else. Susan, when uh, when Lacey called you a cunt in episode two, you seem to really not like that. Like, you can call me a bitch. You can call me a whore. I don't care. I heard all those words growing up. But when you call me a cunt. And he just sits there going, go ahead. Go ahead. Take up more time. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's get it going. I mean, can you imagine? I mean. I think Andy Cohen could bring boxing back the way that guy knows how to fucking, you know, stir shit up out there. I'm telling you, the man has skills. I'm a fan. All right. Um, Plowing ahead. Well, I'll have to look that up. I love the fact. I'm going to just start saying that, even though I don't even know if it's a fact. He has a Napoleon complex. Actually, Napoleon, they've now found out was average height. So you need a new reference just to fucking piss somebody off. I mean, that's really... That's probably 80% of my joy in the world. I can't say that because I got kids now, but you know what I mean. The me outside of my family, 80% of my joy comes from moments like that, just being a fucking douche. I I don't know why. Um, All right. East India Trading Company. Hey, Billy boy. Hey there, Billy boy. Hey there, freckles. Um, You mentioned the East India Company and said you don't know much about them. All right. Yes, I did. I already forget what they are. I I attached a quick video about them to sum them up, but they were essentially an extension of the empire's government. They pretty much did the uh, the normal of what white people would do to us third world people back then. Genocide, looting, slavery, all the hits. (laughs) They stole 45 trillion worth of wealth from India. India accounted for a quarter of the world's uh, GDP. What is that? Gross something product. I forget. Uh, Before the white man got there. Well, why can't you question? Why didn't you kick their fucking ass? You had all of those goddamn people. It was a fucking home game. I mean, that's just fucking hardcore. Like you guys were just crushing it. And then they just come in like, yeah, we're just going to take that. Uh, when they left, it was only 2%. Yeah, I know. I don't think that there's enough out there. There seems to be plenty out there about what the Nazis did to the Jews. There's plenty out there about what white people did to African Americans. But, uh, or maybe I just haven't been paying attention to this. Jesus Christ. White people, white people. You don't have to do it. Um, they stole $45 trillion worth of the wealth from India. <clears throat> India accounted for a quarter. Okay, I've already said that. When they left, it was only 2%. To put the $45 trillion into context, the GDP of America is $20 trillion. They stole more than double what the entire American economy generates an entire year from my people. Good thing Gandhi sent their cracker asses home. Uh, then about 60 years later, you just imported all of us because apparently you guys suck at being doctors and tech things. Oh, look at you talking shit. Look at you talking. Last I checked, you guys don't have polio because of us. You know, I was on board. I get it. You got to talk a little bit of shit. Listen, this is what, this is the deal. There's smart people and there's evil people. 
There's geniuses and there's fucking dopes everywhere. That's why racism is so stupid. So the bottom line is, is as bad as those English guys were, those people exist in your country of India too. All right? I've been over there with your T-shirts, real men don't rape. (laughs) Stop acting like you guys are a bunch of saints over there. I'm not saying you're bad people. I'm just saying like every country, you got your good and the bad. You know, they got this thing now, you know, where they point that thing at your forehead to see if you have a temperature. They got to do that with like human beings, you know, to see if you're a psycho or not, you know. But the problem is, is that psychos run the corporations. So then what they would do is they would just use that shit to take out nice people. You know, like I was talking to a buddy of mine one time and I was say, talking about power, how s- psychos are attracted to power and nice people, they, they're just not they're not attracted to it. So what ends up happening is nice people end up working for like psychos and then psychos stay in power by killing loud, nice people. (laughs) It's basically it. So even if you came up with that invention, the way that they have all of science under their corporate umbrellas, um, they would make sure that they pass the test. Um, So I don't know. Um, and no, we do not suck at being doctors any more than you guys suck at whatever white people have said you guys suck at. Everybody is, you know, offers something and everybody has people in their society that need to be removed. All right. Canceling landlords. Dear Bill, my girlfriend recently got active in politics. Uh, occasionally she says stuff that makes no sense because it's secondhand information from memes. (laughs) Well, yeah. If that's what you're using for your fountain of information. Uh, But who am I to judge? I just Google shit and I read the first article like most people. Uh, Once I had to explain to her how Congress worked because she insisted bills don't go to Capitol Hill. Oh, boy. I even sang her the song. She admitted to being wrong. Well, that's a big thing for an adult to do. And we agreed that for argument's sake, we, parentheses she, won't quote shitty Internet facts. Oh, man, this 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 relationship, somebody's going to have to give here. Either you're going to have to give into her tinfoil fucking hat, reactionary fucking, like I said, Google it, read the first article, research done, or she's going to have to come your way. Um, and it's going to be torture for both of you. Um, all right, cut to this week. She's saying that we need to cancel landlords. I had to try and gather myself to explain to her that her father was a landlord. (laughs) He has a business and owns the building, but rents out office space on the other side. She said, quote, that's different. Oh, boy. She started spouting off all these bullshit facts that I traced back to a Teen Vogue article. Oh, wow, dude, you are a cunt. So you write this shit down and then look it up and, oh, I, God bless you, sir. You have both of your balls firmly within your grasp in this relationship that you're going to fucking take her to the, you're going to take her down to the mat like this. All right. I'm 26 and she's 24. I just don't understand how you can rationalize that renting out residential or commercial space is like slavery. Also, aren't cities with Stupidly high rent prices, mostly blue. Um, well, let's go through them. Uh, certainly everything out here in L.A. is... Uh, L.A. is a weird city, man. It's it's red and blue. People don't realize that because they, all they do is pay attention to Hollywood. But it gets deep red pretty fucking quick. And it gets deep blue pretty fucking quick. And obviously, if you're near the Hollywood sign and... I don't, I don't even know about that. Um, it's just that anybody who is red in Hollywood knows enough to keep their fucking mouth shut. Uh, anyways, we don't live together, so I'm probably going to break up with her in a few weeks. Um, yeah, you're definitely going to. I'm going to send her a meme about canceling girlfriends. Because <laughs> for me, that's an important cause. Go fuck yourself. Love you, Bill. You know what I loved about this guy is he had a problem He faced it. He realized there was no solution, and now he's going to address it. 
This man is going to be successful in life. This is what it is. He saw a problem. He tried to bring the horse to water. The horse would not drink. He sent it to the glue factory and he's moving on. That's how you do it. He didn't adopt it. He, he fucking put it down. I love it. I love that whole story. Provided, you know, that was just your side of the story. Uh, yeah, why would you cancel landlords? You know what I mean? You, you guys are reminding me of the people that wanted to legalize weed. Remember that? Le- legalize weed, man. It's a source for paper. You can make jackets and you can make solar panels out of it, man. Now it's legal. What are they doing? They're just trying to figure out ways to get you more fucked up. Here's a way to be high, but you can actually hold a baby with this strand. This strand right here, you're just going to stare at the wall for fucking three days. It's like, where's the paper? Huh? Where are my green hemp fucking Crocs? They know where to be found. People just want to get fucked up and not, have, not, you know, get high and not have anybody give them any shit, which I don't have a problem with. I really don't have a fucking problem with that. So, um, you know, what is amazing to me is, is people that take those fucking trips, the, 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 the hallucinating ones. And um, that just, that's the thing that just blows my fucking mind people take that and it's just like and when you come back it's just like you're gonna realize that this reality is just this reality that you fucking you know it's that we've just agreed upon but you're gonna be looking at the world in a whole new fucking way it's like dude i can't even fucking i can't even handle reality like uh, i've always been like fascinated with psychedelics but also fucking terrified just the whole thing like you need to take this but you got to make sure you're in a safe place um, I recently had a buddy of mine. I, this is his story, and he's a comedian, so I can't tell it. But he had such a fucking hilarious reaction to this thing that was speaking to him while he was high or tripping. And it tried to criticize him. And his, his reaction was like, well, who the fuck are you? You know? Which is just such the classic stand-up comedian like mindset. Like, what? This guy's great. Why? <laughs> Not saying we're right, but that's just where the. Why the fuck am I listening to this guy? All right, a woman my height. All right, is this a woman colon my height or a woman my height? All right, dear. Mr. Burr, saw you at the Bon Scott gig at the start of the pandemic. That's the last gig I did. That's the last time I did stand-up. And really understood how a world-class comic uh, does it. Thanks for the laughs. Yeah, I had had fun. Thank God I had a good set. Anyway, he goes, I'm a 6'3", 235-pound man. Oh, there you go. Playoff Stanley Cup size right there. That man will keep things settled down on the ice there. And have dated or hooked up with women with heights ranging from 5'3 to 5'9. I've also hooked up with one woman, with two, one or two women who were 5'11. I've recently met an incredible seeming, incredible seeming woman on a dating app. We've spoken over the phone, uh, message a lot, and are getting along wonderfully. Okay, where could this go wrong? We're being hesitant on hanging out because of the pandemic but might do a sort of social distance date if we both test negative. You know, my, my wife, my smoking hot wife, was actually saying the other day, she said, is the COVID test the new AIDS test? Because back in the day when we were coming out, that was a big thing. Have you been tested? Um, all right. Judging by her photos and her social media accounts, she's plenty beautiful. The only thing is she's 6'2". I'm open to trying something different and even excited by the idea. Yeah, who the fuck would want a giant woman? <laughs> That'd be fucking great. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, but I'm worried that I might do or say something that is rude to her unique life experience. I'm also a bit nervous because... All of my cool guy moves and swagger have been in some way shaped by the fact that I typically tower over girls. Sir, this is great. This is a great thing. She's going to get you outside your comfort zone before all you women start fucking chirping. 
Like you don't have a type either. Okay. Like you don't have your little safety fucking zone. Um, I think it'd be funny if she's not wearing heels, you could call her shorty, uh, but just something she probably never had. She's going to be so psyched that you're six, three, you know what I mean? That she finally is going to be, uh, you know, I don't know. She guys are roughly the same, but can you imagine her back in the day dating like a guy five foot six and she wants to be held and feel safe? You know what I mean? And he's hanging on to her like a fucking one of those creepy toddlers that breastfeeds too long. <laughs> By the way, I got to look that up. I don't give a fuck at this point. Um, that's going to be my excuse when the feds come in. Uh, we'd like to talk to you about your search. And hey, do a podcast with no guests. What the fuck am I supposed to do here? At what age is it creepy? To still breastfeed. Oh, man, they got to do this on uh, Steve Harvey's show there, The Family Feud. The Mayo Clinic website states that children are weaned off on an average between ages two and four. (laughs) What the fuck? You listen, nobody remembers what happens to them when they're three. You can't remember. You do not need to remember Hanging on your mom's boob. You don't want to do that. And in some culture, extended breastfeeding continues for a couple of years past that. While the American Academy of Family Physicians recommends breastfeeding past infancy and gradually weaning off at no precise age. All right, here's a great article. Breastfeeding a three and a half year old isn't creepy. It's hilarious. Uh, I was on the couch feeding my newborn. Second child, when her oldest sibling snuggled up close and asked, Mama, can I have some too? She's almost four. Uh, I don't want to read this. Uh. Oh, my God. Gross. I'm just reading the dialogue. She can't say milk. She can only say Mao. Can I have some Mao? And she goes, Mao is for babies. The kid said, please, just a teeny sip. She said, no. Hey, no means no, you little shit. Get away from her tits. She burst into tears. Dismayed, we were back here again after a long, arduous weaning process. She didn't self-wean as I expected. And in around a year, uh, 15 months, 18 months or two, I thought, oh, she didn't wean as I expected. Around a year, 15 months, 18 months or two. I thought of my own mother's claim that I self-weaned at eight months in our conversation surrounding my extended breastfeeding. Going to let her breastfeed till she goes to college, she chided. I said her frozen baggies of milk are in a care pack. I don't want to read this. I don't want to read this. You know what? I don't feel comfortable reading this. I, I, I apologize for looking that up and putting that shit in your fucking... Oh, my God. All right. Anyways, yeah, she's going to get you outside your comfort zone. Uh, All right, this is a strange new world for me, to be frank. Um, I did some research on my particular situation to no avail. I did, however, read that sex and basically everyday interactions are better with a partner closer to one's height. Any thoughts, opinions, insights, or advice would be great. Yeah, you know what I say, buddy? Dive in. Dive in and have fun. She seems wonderful, you know. The fact that you guys, you know, meeting someone during a pandemic, you actually have to take the time to kind of get to know them a little bit, right? So you don't rush into anything. Um, and you don't hang around for the convenience of someone to, to, so you're not lonely or the sex or whatever. So I think this is a good thing. I think you should definitely do it. And, um, you know, that'd be fucking hilarious, though, if she... Uh, I don't want to get involved in it because you might fall in love with this girl, but there's certain positions that you'll then have to fucking figure out because she's, you know, not super short, you know, much shorter than you. You know what I mean? Maybe you'll have to stand on something if she's in a certain position wearing high heels. <laughs> you fucking like six, seven. You know what's great, though, is no one's going to fuck with your kids. All right, best wishes to you and your growing family. Go fuck yourself. All right. Good luck, sir. All right, boyfriend hates my armpit hair. Well, yeah. All right, hi, Bill. 
Love, would you like it if he started to have tits? I mean, that's just how it is in the West. You're not supposed to have that. Having armpit hair was something that is just, it's, it's not mainstream. You're going a little punk rock here. I remember when they did the German version of 99 Luftballons when she put her hands, she put her fucking arms up. We all went, ah! All right. Hi, Bill. Love your podcast. My boyfriend and I listen to it together, and I'm sure he'll be thrilled if this makes it on uh, despite the topic. He doesn't like that I don't shave my armpit hair constant and constantly comments on it. To clear a couple things up, I'm not doing it because I identify as a hippie or I'm taking a counterculture stance. I just never like shaving in general. Oh, so you like a bum. At least if you were fucking attached to some ideology, I would get it. How come guys don't have to do it, but we have to? I get that. You just some. How would you like if you just sat around fucking all unshaven, looking like fucking Bluto on on uh, Popeye? Listen, this is what I think. All right, I think if like you know the person you're banging is turned off by something, you should make a fucking effort. All right, obviously if they go your tits too small, you don't. You tell them to go fuck themselves. Okay, you need a nose job. Tell them to go fuck themselves. But like you know, if if I was doing something or you know. Whatever the fuck I was doing, the, the person I was with saying, hey, that kind of turns me off. I'd be like, I, I got it. I got it. Shaving my armpit hair. Whatever the fuck I got to do. <laughs> anyway, he says it's weird and he notices it often when I wear a sleeveless shirt and we're around people. Yeah. Yeah, you're wearing a sleeveless shirt. You're being a douche. You know he doesn't like it and then you're flaunting it. You're fucking a ma- you're, you're like fucking making him look like a jerk. I don't see why it matters. Most guys have hair there. Why can't I? You passive-aggressive little so-and-so. There's your ideology right there. Just come out and say it. I have good hygiene. I don't smell. Well, listen, first of all, you're, you're applying, you're saying all of this. All right. Good hygiene and you don't smell. That's not you don't make that decision. The people around you tell you that. How the fuck would you know if you don't smell? You're in the eye of the fucking hurricane. Anyways, and it doesn't affect anyone other than their supposedly emotional recreations uh, reactions. Sorry. Doesn't affect anyone other than their supposedly emotional reactions to body hair. To me, it seems to bother him because it goes against what he saw growing up since most women in the U.S. chose to shave. Listen, you are 100% doing the feminist thing here. Most guys have hair there. Why can't I? And you're just reacting this way because Western society has told you this. So don't say that you're not, you're, you, you're, you're doing this for feminist fucking reasons. I'm not saying you're a hardcore feminist. I'm not saying you're a douche. I'm not saying you're wrong. But you are doing this for a fucking reason. Um, my question is, is why do most men find this to be weird or even repulsive? Thanks for reading. If you read it, that's it. Go fuck yourself. I would say the same reason why most women find man tits repulsive. It's like, why can't I have tits? You have tits. There's just certain things that are, um, you know, this is what, this is what uh, I'll, I'll try to do this as nicely as possible. The era in progressive thought is they they had this thing is like, what is normal? There is no normal. It's like, yeah, there is. There is a normal. And all of these super progressive people also have a normal. Or else you would walk around and you would never be uncomfortable. If I walk down this, my driveway and I see a fucking bear in my driveway, that's not normal. But I could argue it is normal. I'm outside. Bears live outside. I'm not used to seeing a bear in my fucking driveway. Now, if I get uncomfortable, does that mean I fucking hate bears? Sweetheart, you got a fucking goddamn den of bears under your fucking armpits. See, you're freaking them out. Listen, it's, it's all how you grew up, okay? If you grew up and women had hair under their arms, no, it wouldn't bug you. But, but we didn't, so it becomes weird. There's societies and like, there's like things where guys walk down the street holding their hands. We don't do that here. I could never do that to my, with my, another one of my guy friends. I, I, I didn't know what the, 
I don't even know what would happen to our friendship. We can never talk to each other again. All right, but here's the deal. As much as you're probably judging me now, if it was reversed and it was another country of doing it, progressive people would be like, well, you have to respect their culture. Um, so here's the thing. You can have hair under your fucking arms. You have every right to have hair under your arms, and he has every right to be fucking grossed out by it. And I think he's being a great fucking guy tolerating it. Yes, tolerating it. He's putting up with this thing. And that's what you do in a relationship. You tolerate, if you really like somebody, is you put up with their bullshit. And your bullshit is, you know, you got fucking, you got Kevin McHale's fucking arm hip, armpit hair. Um, I don't, there is nothing wrong for a guy to be repulsed by, arm, by armpit hair. Any more than uh, if a woman is repulsed by something that a guy does. You can't help how you're fucking wired. And this whole fucking thing, you know, they've been doing this thing where like, well, what is beauty? What, what is, you know, it's like I, if Madison Avenue has been the, the people telling us what beauty is. Shut the fuck up. You know, you know what a good looking person looks like. And you know what a, a fucking fucked up looking person looks like. Okay. Because th- th- that whole fucking shit that, that feminists argue about beauty, notice they don't really argue it for men. They only argue it for women, okay? They want to eat cookies and fucking be on billboards. That's what they want to do. They, they, they want to they they be just in the fucking express lane their whole life and fucking not have to do anything. Um, and then meanwhile, we have to continue to do all of our shit. You know what I mean? I mean, did you ever see like, a, I don't know, is there any sort of male movement out there to be like going like, what is with all of these fucking things on tv about you know what's wrong with an older man not being able to get his dick hard anymore i mean everything on there is you got to have abs your dick's got to be fucking saluting the flag and you got to have a fucking lion's mane of hair every fucking thing in on there has it who gives a shit it is what it is so here's the deal uh your boyfriend hates your armpit hair um you know, I got to be honest with you, if, if, if my wife had a problem with something that I could correct physically without any sort of major surgery, I, I would do it for her. I wouldn't have a fucking problem with it. I mean, I don't think it's that big of a fucking deal. I don't even think you have to be a jerk about it. I don't think you even have to shave your fucking armpits. You don't have to be. But two things you need to do. You need to own up to the fact that you're doing it for a fucking reason. Um, if you're honest with him that, then he could have an honest conversation with you because you're trying to act like, I'm, I'm just, you know. I'm not being like a hippie or a counterculture person. You, 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 you are, which is totally fine. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I, it's, I will say this. It's not as gross to me as it used to be. It's a little more uh, mainstream, I would say. But like, uh, I'll, I'll tell you something that I never fuck. You know, the completely shaved fucking beaver. It's just like, uh, I'm trying to be with a woman here. <laughs> That, 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 that has always fucking creeped me out. Just creeps me out. All right. Um, fucking creeps me out. So I, I, you know, I don't know. And I, did I ever say, I don't think I ever said anything. Uh, I, I passively aggressive. What do you think? I'd be like, yeah, it's pretty intense. So like, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I like being in the crowd. I don't need to be that far backstage. <laughs> All right. Underrated. Small town stories. Uh, hey, Billy Crimson Crotch. I like that one. Roll Tide. Uh, have you seen the new documentary movie Tread yet on Netflix? It's awesome. It's about an old school welder um, that lives in a small town in Colorado called uh, Granby. In the 1990s and early 2000s, he opened a welding shop in town and pretty much welded everything for everybody. Anyway, this, I, I'm definitely going to watch this because I'm fascinated with welding. Uh, he caught up in he got caught up in some drama with the old boys club of small town politics and his neighbor in town board turned against him, stating and started fucking with his shop and way of life. I don't know. You're going to ruin it here. I'm not going to read anything else. I'm going to read this shit. Uh, Tread, T-R-E-A-D, on Netflix. I believe I will be watching that tonight. I mean, how do you not watch a documentary on welding? 
How do you not? Well, easily. You get involved in all these playoffs. Well, guess what I have time for? I have time right now to watch the end of the St. Louis Blues uh, game, and then I'm going to watch the fucking... Um, I'm going to watch the, uh, what are the, the Toronto Maple Leafs. I have to root for them, but I also love the Columbus Blue Jackets. I, I really like both of those teams, but, you know, Toronto has been waiting forever, so uh, I don't know. We shall see what happens. Anyways... Anyway, that is the uh, the podcast, everybody. Uh, you and your armpit hair or your lack of armpit hair. Have a great fucking time. What a fucking... I, I, I hate passive-aggressive shit, okay? What? I'm not doing it because of this. And then you say why you're doing it, and then you're wearing tank tops out in front of his friends, okay? I, you know what you're doing. You're putting your statement out there, and then you're trying to get, well, what if I didn't... What if I don't shave my armpits? Would you have a problem with that? You're just starting shit. You know what you're doing, all right? You're just not as good at it as you think you are. Um, Having said that, um, you know, I would not kick any woman out of bed that had armpit hair. I would not do that if they were fucking nice enough to want to fuck me. There, I said it. Okay, there you go. God bless everybody. Go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday. So we shall see what happens. And I, um, you know, I had to put my lovely daughter to bed and all that stuff. And and the last two nights, I went out and I did my first two stand-up spots since this fucking thing all started. I did a show, uh, The People in the Belly Room. You know, the comedy store put together a show at the... uh, at the uh, in the the parking lot of the Magic Castle, right here in Hollywood, and uh, I did a show last night. Oh my god! And I had not, you know, I haven't done my act since like March 10th. So, and I'm trying to think, like, what the fuck am I going to talk about? I have no idea. You know, started listening to my act. I had one bad recording of it, and it was one of those nights where I was just fucking riffing and shit. So, it really wasn't my act. So I go up on stage. It's like this wooden thing that they put together. Some Christmas lights on it and shit. And everybody's in their cars. And they got these little clacker things that sound like fucking locusts. Which were really fucking annoying the first night. You know, because it was just weird. Like, what is this? It sounds like jazz snapping fingers or some shit. Like I'm in some beatnik coffee house in the village back in the 60s. You know, when stand-up was first getting going, right? As far as like after the Borscht Belt guys getting going, right? So um, I go up on stage and I'm sort of, you know, I get the initial laughs. What the fuck am I doing in a parking lot? You know, bullshit. Trying, trying to get my feet underneath me. Just trying to th- see if anything comes to me. So um, nothing was coming to me. So I just, you know, I just went to my old tried and true. You know, I just started trashing women. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not what I want to do. I want to get away from that. So I, I start doing this bit about women, you know, who's smarter and that type of shit. And, you know, you know, it starts going down that road, right? And uh, so I do what I used to do. I butter up the women to get them all fucking going. And then I fucking hit them with the overhand left, right? So I do that. And all of a sudden, this woman, I swear to God, sticks her head out her fucking car window like Ace Ventura. Just starts yelling up at the stage. I can barely see her because people got their headlights on and shit. And she's just going, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And she won't stop through the whole bit, right? So I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you must have been on the debating team. Or I'm just breaking her balls or whatever. And then I hear, the, hear this guy voice go, yeah, fuck you, buddy. Starts doing that. I go, wait a minute. I go, are you with her? He's like, Yeah. I go, take your fucking balls out of, her pur- out of her purse before she bends you over the sink when you get home tonight, right? You know, the usual. The usual sunshine that I bring. So uh, I continue with the joke, and I swear to God, the car backed up and they drove away. <laughs> and two other cars drove away too. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself like, as they're doing it, like, I'm in my head going, my first thought was, like, I know I'm on last. Have I gone over? I feel like I, I just got up here. Are they going to get in trouble? That was my first thought. And then I realized, I was like, and I said to the people, I was like, are they leaving? And they're like, yeah, they're flicking their lights and shit. And I was just, uh, 
one of the few times in my comedy career in like, I don't know, in a long time, I was just like speechless. I just, I, I really thought, or I guess I was hoping that this white woman fucking act was going to be done. And we could actually get to the truly oppressed people, people of color that started the woke movement. But nope, they picked right up where they left off. And, um, you know, I finished my set. I didn't have a, I really did not have a good set. And also, in defense of the people who drove away, is like a lot of my shit is sort of, I lead you down one way and then I, you know, make you think one thing and then I say something. You know, it's, it's a joke. You can't know where it's going. So, but there's a rhythm to it and you have to know what comes next once you piss them off. And I was tr- trying to remember it. I was searching. So it was fucking up the timing. So they got pissed. But to drive away, it's like, really? I, I, like, how fucking old are you? So I came home after the set and I just was like, I was like depressed where I was just like, all right, I get it. I'm the older comic now. And I get that younger people aren't going to understand me, but like, it's not that they don't understand you. It's that they're getting offended. Like, it's like they're acting like they're old and you're some young punk up there, like fucking shooting heroin into your arm. And all I'm doing is telling a fucking joke. So it was really like depressing and just, you know, just a lot of this shit that's been going on on Twitter, watching fucking the ignorance of comedians on social media, like attacking other comedians, um, you know, over shit that nobody involved in the argument was even there. So I don't really know what is going on, but it's just like, guys, like you're literally playing into the hands of people that are trying to censor us. They've, they've divided us. And now it's like, you don't trash other fucking comics. You can get their phone number. You got to fucking beef with them, have it out with them. Right. I mean, admittedly, I've made fun of a few comedians tweets, but like, I, I, I'm not trying to end their fucking career. Um, so anyway, uh, just that whole fucking thing where it's just like this ever since this whole fucking shit, it's like it's just gone so far beyond what it was supposed to be about. And this stuff is just literally it's like not fun anymore. It used to be fun like to to. You know, go up there and just have thoughts and just say them. And just have a good time and everybody knew you were just fucking around and it was fun to watch other comics catch a zone and to see these moments and shit happen. You know, people heckled, you got it in, into it with people, but there wasn't like this whole like political fucking politicized like uh, we need to end your career now because of this joke vibe that is like it's literally undoing in a way like you know, people went to jail so you could go up and do what you're doing. And now um, so-called open-minded people are, are like undoing it. It's fucking, but it's really bizarre. So I came home, right? And I don't have any like cigars in the house. I don't drink anymore. I'm not a fucking drug user, you know? So, I mean, as far as like illegal ones, you know, so I fucking... Uh, I came home like some sad person on prom night and I I fucking made a frozen pizza that sucked. I ate the whole thing and had a fucking root beer. (laughs) I woke up to the morning and I felt like shit. And uh, Josh Adam Myers asked me, he goes, you coming down again tonight? And I was just like, yeah, I'm coming down. I'm going to come back. I got to go back down. I can't end on that one. And I had already talked to another buddy of mine who's actually kind of stopped doing stand-up. He's just like, I just don't want to deal with live crowds. I want to write scripts. I just don't, I don't want to deal with live crowds anymore. I mean, this is literally conversations like people are having. It's fucking crazy. So I say, fuck it. Let me get back on the horse. So tonight I went down there and I actually found a, a recording for my act in December. And a lot of it was holiday shit, so it didn't quite work. But just to listen to my act a little, I listened to it. And I was like, all right, so I kind of know what I'm going to start with. And I went up there, and tonight I fucking killed. And I had a great set, and I was used to the clacking 
thing and I just did two sets in two nights and I feel like I'm a fucking hundred feet tall. I was making people laugh. I was fun. I was silly. Like last night, I think I was just a little walled off and just what I was saying was bad. And I got into it with that chick in the car and I, I just, I don't, I, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> I don't want to make people leave the show. I don't mind pissing you off, but I mean, in the end, you know, I bring it around and make you laugh, but I, I just, I fucking hate doing that. Um, so, um, I ended up having a fucking great set tonight. And uh, so I came home and I wasn't going to do my podcast tonight. And I come home and, you know, my poor wife had to listen to me bitching last night. So I came home. I was like, I fucking crushed. I had a great set. I'm psyched. I go, I'm so psyched. I don't even, do, even want to do my podcast. You know, I had such a great set. It's like, I don't want to fucking, I don't want to fuck it up. I want to sit down and eat a bowl of cereal and hang out with you. And she's just like, oh, I thought you were going to do your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like Do you like not like me anymore Or whatever She goes No nah, I'm just sort of you know Hanging out and I was going to watch my show It's like oh I get it I get it You're watching a Real Housewife show And if I come in here I'm going to ruin it I get it I get it Alright I'll leave so Poor thing She tries to watch her shows And I never shut the fuck up I mean she leaves me alone When I watch my stupid fucking hockey and stuff So it's only fair so now I'm out here. I'm doing this shit. So um, I want to thank everybody for fucking who built the goddamn stage out there and all of that shit. Um, hey, look at that. Look at that. I just got a text from fucking jo- Mosh Adam Jayas, Josh Adam Myers. He goes, you fucking ripped it tonight. I have not gotten that text in forever. I want to thank Tammy Joe for uh setting the whole thing up. She runs the belly room on a lot of, you know, some of the nights when back when you could do stand up in a comedy club, they set that all up. I know there's a lot of hard work involved. They made sure everybody was safe and uh like I was, you know, I was not in a like I don't know. When you got kids, they put you in a good mood. Um but uh you know, professionally was not in a good mood. So uh, I was definitely missing doing it. And I swear to God, if they had that fucking thing seven nights a week, I would go down there every fucking night. That's, that's how much I miss it. So I want to thank everybody too for showing up, sitting in your fucking cars. I hope it made you laugh. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's the greatest. Like fucking, I got a new baby boy. I got a beautiful daughter. I did two sets tonight in this fucking hockey playoffs. I mean, I'm in the best mood ever. Here we go. My girlfriend is guilting me into going to medical school in Russia. (laughs) She's trying to ship your ass off. (laughs) She's trying to get rid of you. Let me see here. Hey, Bill, love your humor. You're an absolute riot. Thank you. I am in a real conundrum. This guy's smart, huh? Conundrum? Who uses that word? It really doesn't take a lot to impress you. (laughs) Who who in your world says conundrum? It's not that, like, odd of a word for people to use. Like, people use use it. be funny all the time. Use it in a sentence. Just casually throw that out there and just wow me with it. Go ahead. Wow you with it? Wow me with conundrum. I'm not going to wow you with it. I'm just going to say, well, that's quite a conundrum. That's all I got right now. I'm not going to wow you with it. Sorry. You know why? Because Jesus it's not Christ. a wow-worthy word, which is my point. Anyway, just keep reading. No, it wasn't. You, you, no, wait, you insulted me a little bit there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to back your way out of that. I'm impressed by the word conundrum. There. I like it. It has drum in it. Almost sounds like condominium. Could have my drums in a condo, not deal with your fucking pain in the ass, you know? Sorry. So you my girl, shut it. Me. You wouldn't last a week without me. I lasted like 35 years without you. What are you talking about? So my girlfriend... couldn't go any further, is my point. It doesn't get any better than this. This is what it's like with you, constantly interrupting <laughs> me. All right, so my girlfriend is Russian-American. Uh, her parents are from Russia. Her dad went to medical school there and wants her to go to medical school there, too. Uh, when we first started dating, the plan was for her to always go to law school, which is super convenient because the school is in the city where I live. All of this started to come into place. She got accepted to a great school, but now she's changing her mind about law school. Now she doesn't just want me to quit my job. She wants me, a guy with a communications degree who barely graduated college, to go with her to medical school and enroll as a student. 
Wait, she, you? Communi- I have a communication degree. You ain't going to make it through medical school. <laughs> Although he did use the word conundrum. Wait, am I the dumbest guy with a communications degree? <laughs> this is horrific. Um, I love her, but I told her no many times, and every time she guilts me into telling her, I'll think about it. Well, yeah, she's manipulating you. Don't do that. But then she hits me with the, if you love me, you wouldn't have to think about it. You move to Russia and go to medical school with me? Oh, God, no. Yeah, how do you say go fuck yourself in Russian? <laughs> <laughs> the biggest part that makes me uncomfortable is that she said her dad will pay for it all. And I know, uh, no, dude, you don't want oh some Russian God. dude paying for your education. Oh. You're going to owe him something. <laughs> Well, this gonna, sounds like the beginning of like some mob movie. He's going to expect him to marry his daughter and be a doctor and make a shit ton of money and have babies and shit. That's what he's going to yeah. expect. Well, they're going to bury you out in the snow and they're never going to find you. Yeah. The biggest part that makes me... Okay. Uh, fuck that. The biggest part that makes me uncomfortable is that she said her dad will pay for it. And I know any time someone does a favor for you, they'll always ask something in return. I do... I do not want to do this, but I feel like I am in too deep to back out of the situation. You are not. You are not. The only way out is to f- fail the entry exam on purpose. There you go. No, that's the chicken Throw shit it. way out. Should I go through with it and risk my job slash savings? Should I go through with it and risk my job slash savings moving to Russia or fail the exam and break up with her? Don't take the exam and break up with her. Yeah, I know. Come on now. Come on now. Let's let's not be silly. You're not going to actually take the fucking test. That's absurd. You know, I read a great Pablo Ex- Escobar quote about lying. Mm-hmm. He goes, I never lie. People who lie, it's because they're afraid and I'm never afraid. And I was like, wow. He says, when you lie, that means you're afraid. This guy is lying because he's afraid. He's afraid of the whole fucking situation. This is a great opportunity for you to go Pablo Escobar here. Pablo Escobar that shit. That's right. Get your balls. Yes. You know, back down in your sack where they fucking belong instead of in your throat (laughs) and just say, listen, I'm not doing this. And she goes, well, if you really love me, you would. And evidently, I don't love you enough. Nostrovier, however the fuck you say, cheers. Um... Da idu. I don't know too much Russia. Oh God, yeah, no. Um, uh, yeah. Well, how much Russian do you know? None. Okay. Um, all right. Spasiba. Huh? Spasiba or something like that. It was on Sex in the City. Never mind. I just remember Nostrovia. What does that mean? It just means cheers. Huh. I know <laughs> any booze thing. I know. Um, Would you ever go to Russia? Would you ever go to Moscow or something? Uh, yeah, I would. I would I love like, to go I there. I feel like it's not a good idea for Americans to go to Russia. Like, well, you know, I think the people I feel like are, it's tense right now. <laughs> yeah, it's always kind of tense. <laughs> and just, but Russian dudes are fucking hilarious. They're great hockey there. players. They're tough as fucking nails. I mean, there's a lot to love about Russian people. I feel like they fucking yeah. beat the Germans all the way back to their goddamn fucking strudel, whatever the fuck it is they eat over there. I know, um, I know a Russian girl, and she is. Lovely. I know a girl named Karen, and, and she, she's the nicest person. Stop calling is, white women Karens. And no, and she's very um, no, she's really cool, and she's like has really good taste in music, and she's very sexy. I think Russian girls are sexy. I think that I like their accent. It's kind of harsh, but it's very much like you know, like they're in charge. Sorry. Where is this no. going? <laughs> oh, want to bring her over sometime? <laughs> All right, man-to-man advice. <laughs> I think I just set up a fucking threesome there. Man-to-man advice to an 18-year-old from the Republic of Georgia. Any hot Russian girls hit me up in my DMs. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please don't. No, don't do that. Because those chicks are super smart. They're, they're, they're playing it like we're in the varsity team. I'm the JV team. They're on the varsity team. They'll no, come. my DMs aren't open, so it wouldn't work even if All I right. tried. All right, okay. Man-to-man advice to an 18-year-old from the Republic of Georgia, which I believe is in, like, it's east of, uh, isn't that east of, like, Greece? We had an exchange student in high school from the Republic of Georgia. (laughs) I have never hated how you started a sentence more ever in my life. You've interrupted me nine times trying to get through this fucking thing. I'm trying to get 
the momentum of this podcast again and again. We had an exchange tune. You know, you sounded like Joe Piscopo back in the day when he would do Alan Funt. Where we thought it would be funny. If you did that on a first date, we would not be fucking married. Interrupt me with that long, slow speaking. The f- what, 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 who gives a fuck? Oh, my God. Sorry, people. She, she, she gave birth about, you know, a couple months ago. She's still recovering. She's I'm breastfeeding. Sure. She's exhausted. We have... You sound like you're like 80 years old. And our favorite song. ba ba da beep 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 ba da ba do ba da ba dee beep beep What? I'm just... Why don't you go download a, a shuffleboard app? Fucking blue hair. All right. Oh, my God. All right. Why? I'm trying to because you've been annoying me. You've been annoying. You, 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 you got to get with the flow of the show here. You interrupted like nine times. All right. Hey, Bill, I need someone to give me an advice. An advice. I love this. I need someone to give me an advice. Oh, wait. It's time. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Play it. What it's the- time yeah. for advice. Hey. Your host, Billy Brown. That's me. And I'm off this melody. I had some advice with an exchange student. Ugh. What is this? Oh, shit. It's more music. Night. Today, I told someone that I don't want to be their friend ever. What? Ever. Even thought... Wait. Okay. I love... This is broken English. Hey, Bill, I need someone to give an advice because I don't feel I have no one to talk to. All right. Today, I told someone that I don't want to be their friend ever, even thought we have mutual, even though we have mutual friends. I have been hanging around this guy for quite some time, and we've never got along, especially after he started calling me names and being disrespectful to me. Well, yeah, this is easy. Fuck this guy. Oh, he's a bully. Uh, We settled after a little quarrel, uh, but today he asked me if I changed my mind about him, and I told him no. Jeez, this guy is fucking relentless. Uh, My friends did not liked it, and everyone told me that I was wrong because he is our mutual friend. I don't give give a damn. What kind of friend? Listen, this guy's an asshole, and your friends are assholes. I don't give a damn about this guy, but I'm afraid my actual friends will stop contacting me as I am leaving my country to study abroad. Uh, These are the guys I grew up with. I don't want to end my time with them on a bad note, but I fucked up because I did not said a lie and did not told that fucker that we were good. All right, help me out here, because I did not say a lie and did not... Because this is fun. Yeah. Plus, I've always had a problem with contacting other men as I grew up without a father and had no one to mentor me how to behave and what is right or wrong. I'm asking you, what would you have done in my place and what should I do? Should I have said a lie or the truth in this situation? What, that you like this guy? No, if this guy's being an asshole to you, fuck this guy. And if your friend's... If you told your friends that he's been an asshole and they're still saying you need to be friends with this guy, then your friends are assholes and studying abroad is a great way to go get some new friends. P.S. You got some fans in the Republic of Georgia. Well, I'm a fan of you for fucking listening. God bless you. That's what that's my advice. What do you say? Uh, yeah. Let's say you. Yeah, totally. Would you say this is a bit of a conundrum? I would say that's a bit of a conundrum. But yeah, I think it sounds like you need a whole new set of friends. Yeah. I think you got to go fuck all you guys i'm leaving the republic of georgia to go study abroad and when i come back you guys are all still going to be here <laughs> you're all going to be you're all you're, dead to me <laughs> yeah you're all going to still be here giving tours of fucking transylvania and i'm going to be in fucking medical school um all right joke trouble with my lady hey billy big brood hey that's cool i only got two i don't have a brood i think you need at least three to have a brood uh, congratulations on rounding off the family with the sun. I was talking about how he's smiling now. Oh, my God. Big smiles. He's so beautiful. He's a, he's a good-looking dude. I'm not yeah, going to lie to you. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you have the full set. Uh, I love the podcast, and it, it especially kept me going during uh, lockdown. 
So thank you for keeping it going. Me and my lady just got engaged. Congratulations and moved in together. She's beautiful, funny, clever, and has a heart of gold. Uh, And she's black. This is important later. Uh Uh-oh. Here we go. Um, Oh, the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. Um, So I I love her to death, but she does leave shit on the stairs all the time. Shoes mostly. And I tried to diffuse this with the joke, which went badly. And I wanted your opinion on what if on if I'm doing well, what I'm doing wrong. OK, so I trip over a pair of her shoes as I'm coming down the stairs and yelled up to her. Really? 30 years after Ghost Dad and black people are still leaving shit on the stairs. I don't get that joke. I don't either. I never saw that movie. But OK. Oh, you know what? You went you went to ex- ob- obscure. It went down like a wet fart, he said, and the rest of the day was a bit frosty. Uh, it is, is it down to me being a white guy saying it, or is it the Cosby reference that makes it seem worse? It, it's a double whammy, my friend. <laughs> you not only try to, hey, have black people doing this, which is already, eh, you got to be careful with that. Yeah, and, yeah, it depends on how you guys joke. And you had to throw in a, yeah, a Cosby reference. Ooh, or he said, or is it just flat out not funny? If I'm no stand up, but I, okay, I'm no stand up, but I thought at least it m- merited a courtesy laugh. Uh, best to you and your family. Keep doing what you're doing. I think he could have got away with it if they have a playful relationship like that, but right. then he, you got to kind of say shit like that in like a stupid accent. You, you, if, like, if he went like, uh, what, what did he say? Let me try to make this funny to you. Yeah, I know. But the thing is, I don't know. Really? 30 years after Ghost Dad, black people still live? <laughs> See, you laugh because it's fucking stupid. Because now it sounds like I'm, I'm clearly joking. Yes, yes. But if I went like, really? 30 years after Ghost Dad and black people are still leaving shit on the stairs? Then, then it doesn't work. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's you got you to be silly. That's true. Just buy her a nice bouquet of flowers and say i'm sorry for my stupid and sensitive joke it won't happen again and just just move on just play her this what is like but what is that reference though i never saw ghost dad that's the thing people might have seen ghost dad more than i thought but like i no i assume he's dead but he's still around and only his kids maybe he went down the stairs he tripped and then he became a ghost and then he was ghost dad (laughs) I'll tell you, Bill Cosby could do a TV show like nobody, but that guy could not pick a fucking movie script to save his life. Ghost Dad. Did you ever see Ghost Dog with Forrest Whitaker? Do you remember that movie? No. Did the dog bump his head in the doghouse and then become a... No, no, Ghost Dog. Something way of the sim. I don't know what it is. It was a good movie. Anyway, move on. That went over about as well as that guy's joke. I know, I know, right? What's the matter, huh? That's it. (laughs) You, you, You know, you just... You're, you're your new mom. You know what I mean? Like, you should you're see how tired she is. You're all over I'm me. I'm not. I'm trying to have empathy. You're tired. I thought I was up, I thought I was up here having a good time. No, you're having a good time. You're trashing me. You know, I just was we how you know. had an exchange <laughs> student. <laughs> you and sounded like an old white lady named Ethel. And literally, during that whole, as you were trying to like, you know, slaughter your way through that question i was picturing that kid like he was the one asking for advice like what if that actually was him who no it's not he would be like my age and he wouldn't be dealing with that at at that age right and plus it was from an 18 year old that question yeah i don't know what you're talking about What, What, what are you talking about that one man to man advice to an 18 year old oh 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 anyway no, that was a woman. What? I need to talk to someone. That's that's uh, the, the man-to-man advice. I thought that was a woman. No, it says man-to-man. Where did you think a woman was in there? And he said he didn't have a like a male figure in his life, so he didn't have anybody to tell him. Oh, I thought this was some guy him. hitting on a chick. I'm an idiot. What? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I still stand by it. Fuck that guy. Yes. Ultimately, still fuck that guy. Fuck that guy and fuck your friends. That's because that sounded like that whole drama sounded like a chick situation. Like, oh my God, we're friends with him. So like, you have to be like fucking friends. What are we doing here? Fuck off. Fuck all of you guys. (sighs) Fuck all of them. Was that exhale? Like not liking what I was doing? 
No. I okay. Like All right. I, th- I thought, I, you know, geez. All right. Fat wife won't let me work out. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing funnier than just getting to the point what? and just being the truth. I don't even want to hear the question. I just love like the I mean that's like a one liner. <laughs> Fat life won't let me work out. I love it. That's one of the greats of all time. Questions. Hey there, Billy Goat. Uh let's see here. Uh I have a problem. And would like your hilarious opinion on what I should do. Me and my wife have been together about five years now and married for two. When we first got together, I was a young stud in my prime, in shape and crushing ass left and right. She was in good shape, too. I used to work out four to five days a week, and life was great. When we got married, she didn't like me going to the gym because she says I will leave her for a fitness chick. Oh, the insecurity. All right. I got uh, I got to the point where I had to get her a membership so we could go together just so I could have my joy of pumping iron. Uh, but she only went four times and stopped going. Pumping iron. Pumping iron. You got to do it. <laughs> this guy's an old school guy. Pumping iron. Like people still say pump. Well, he was probably yeah, he says it, you know. You know, doesn't, uh, doesn't mm-hmm. some of your older relatives call people jive turkeys? Huh? Uh, uh, do I got to watch Ghost Dog? Fucking... <laughs> and leave my shoes on the stairs. Whatever the fuck that means. What does that fucking mean? I just love... I got I to gotta tell, so, tell you something. It's as a so comedian... Random. But as a comedian, I respect the balls of an obscure reference. She probably got offended me like, what? Because it's, it's Bill Cosby. We all saw the fucking movie. You think I saw every black movie that's out there? Fucking asshole. <laughs> I think she's just, maybe she's really into movies and she's fucking offended that you think that, you know, that she would go watch that pile of shit. Oh my God. All right. So anyways, now we just. Oh, wait, ha- wait, I'm sorry. Just real quick. Just before we move on. I do find that like white guys do have the most random fucking movie references ever. Like, nerdy white guys have the most... Ra- and they're throwing it out there. Like, everybody knows it. I do feel... Now, like do you feel like... Do you feel like it's... it's Isn't mm-hmm. some of it random because maybe they're watching really white shit that you wouldn't watch? Because I think... Because uh, I kind of get, you know, like you... Every once in a while, like, you know, some of your your uh, your peeps will be over our house and something will come on that I've never heard of and you guys go fucking nuts like... Right. It's like Frosty the Snowman. Every year I would watch this shit. I, was, I have no idea what it is. So maybe uh, maybe there's yeah. some of that. Anyways, I don't want to get into that guy's fucking <laughs> quagmire. Huh? Conundrum, quagmire. We're using all the, uh, the big ones. All right. Anyways, now we just had a baby. Now we just had a baby girl. Congratulations. Congrats. And we're both tired and out of shape. I want to get back into the gym and get rid of this dad bod, but I can't because she guilt trips me saying... I could help with the baby instead. Uh, instead of wanting to get in shape, also, she always says, I'm going to get ripped and leave her for a skinny girl in the gym, and it annoys the shit out of me. That is annoying. Yeah, the- but you feel really insecure, like, after you have a baby, because it's just your body. It's like you they don't prepare you for what <laughs> childbirth does to your body. I know, but she was doing this you. shit before. Right, but she's like moving at. But no, I'm not saying that she shouldn't. He should. They should get a babysitter, so she can work out. So they can work out together or whatever. Yeah, but he already tried that, and she only went four times. So now, oh. like you know, oh, yeah. listen. Killed one workout. I've lost three friends this year: two heart attacks and a stroke. Like what this guy's doing is actually, like, gonna prolong his life. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want to have a kid with the guy, and then he drops of a fucking heart attack. I mean, what are we doing here? Um. Anyways, instead of wanting to get in shape, uh, okay, I read all of that. What should I do? I don't want to give up working out, but I also don't want to feel be an un, un, feel unsupportive as a husband. Keep up the good work. Congrats oh. on the baby boy. I mean, no, see, his, his heart's in the right place. I go know, to the fucking that's, gym. That's really hard. And you know what, though? You have to go to the gym, though, because it's what you feel what makes you feel good and like she'll get over it she won't take it personally just like just have her her... blow you before you go to the gym then she can relent what that's a good 
no. You just give her extra hugs and that? kisses and tell her she's beautiful and tell her she's a great mom and you'll help her out like whenever she needs it and she'll get over it. Like she's just no, no. Happy. Take your dick out and be like, do you want to hang on to this? <laughs> huh? You see this? See this? This is going to walk right out that door if you don't let me go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, you got to. It's just sensitive right now. It's a very sensitive time. So you have to be. But she was sensitive before too. Yeah, I know. And it might not, who knows, it might be a bigger thing. But for now, just like, but you should still go to the gym because, you know, you need to get your stress out and all that other shit too. So good luck with that. Good luck with that. All right. Uh, Underrated. Arabs. Oh, God. What? No, I mean, it's not bad that they're, uh, yeah, I don't know where it's going. I just judged it by you really underrated did. Arabs. Well, I mean. Hey, you know exactly. what? I think that bad. Exactly. See? That's you how you heard it. But that's how you heard it. No, but you do. That's not how I heard it. Funny. That's not how I heard it. I was like, oh, great. This is going to be something complimentary considering the beef we've been having. <laughs> I mean, since since nine eleven, this is this is some positive. I like let's bring people together. Oh god, underrated. All right, no. hey hey there, Red Bildo. Uh, I am a twenty one year old guy from Saudi Arabia. Um, wish to know if you plan to include us in your next tour. Our government pays good money for entertainment. Well, what are the parameters? Mm. I just want to make sure I ain't going over there, and all of a sudden I say something. You know. The, uh, the wrong fucking thing, and then I get in trouble. I, I, don't, I don't need that. What country was I in? Where you, you, I think it was Singapore, where I was just going like, oh, fuck, man. They, you know, you, know you, you spit gum out on the street, they fucking beat the shit out of you with a goddamn <laughs> fucking nearest tree or something. Um, he says, anyway, he's, in the last five years or so, I watched a considerable amount of movies and TV shows and came to notice that there's a stereotype you Westerners... You Westerns have about us, which is that we're either illiterate fucks who live in the desert, tending our camels and thinking about blowing your country, blowing up your country, not blowing your country, or or that we're buried in money and don't have any problems. Dude, I got to be honest with you. The second you said you were from Saudi Arabia, I just pictured somebody vacationing in London Shipping his cars in one car and in one plane and himself in his private jet. Right. Yeah. No. There is like definitely and, that, that stereotype of like the Saudi prince. That's like yeah, spending money. But like I, I never, I never thought the illiterate thing though. Car. Yeah. No, I never thought that. But yeah, you definitely have this idea of yeah. Oh, I and I have the feeling that if I go over to the Middle East as an American, that we just we've just had so many fucking uh, you know not good back and forths over there that I'm gonna get the fucking ass kicking that they want to give our last three fucking presidents. Um, anyway, uh, and I want to squash the stereotype by saying that we live our lives just like you. I myself come from a middle-class family and I study energy engineering. This is such a great fucking email. I'm glad this came in. I listen to Western music and am familiar with the bands and love the Beatles and Zeppelin. I watch the NBA and even like the Celtics. Ah, this fucking guy's great. The Sellies. My friends and I hang out in cafes or whatever, and we try to pick up chicks. No, the, of course. Yeah. The, the only difference between us is that you probably do these activities while drinking alcohol, uh, when we drink, drink coffee or any kind of soda, and that I have hair and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Please con- consider touring here. Wouldn't miss it. Go fuck yourself. Well, you know what? I mean... That's a nice that is a great email. No, that's really cool. Yeah. All right. No, that's, that is, that did make me think, didn't, didn't we have that experience in London? Not of like Saudis specifically or anything like that. But wasn't there something when we were in London one time and there was a bunch of cars, like really luxury cars that were just going down this one main drag? Oh, no, it was hilarious. Or those were, those were the events. princes. The there princes were over there. Was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were just kind of, it was this whole parade. It was like a display of beautiful luxury vehicles that were just Dude, lining the street. Okay, you want to know what really happened? It was a bunch of rich princes in in Ferraris and Lamborghinis driving like in stop and go traffic just revving the engines. Wow, 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 wow. And they're loud as they shit. Not really <laughs> getting anywhere fast. And they had all these mm-hmm. like wraps on on the cars and shit. And that I, I was, was my favorite. I was walking up the street and as they were revving the engine, dang, 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 like loud as shit, 
this English woman just goes, ah, stop it. <laughs> it was hilarious. The old British bitty. Yeah, they were showing off. They, 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 I believe I believe your people call it stunting. Um, all right, now I'm in trouble. I should have said it. I said it with the next ghost dad reference. We're Uh, good. Ghost dad. I mean, that is fucking up there. Hey, tell everybody how great my new hi-fi stereo is. Oh, it's great. It's got uh, highs and it's got fives. Oh, fuck you. All right. God bless you. All right, everybody. Um, Well, you know, I would love to tour a bunch of places if, you know, they'll go. Once the COVID cure comes, I'm ready to go. I had a great set in a parking lot tonight and I'm excited. I'm excited. This takes me back to the old days, man. Made no money. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a hell gig. I was able to get myself through it. It's fun. I'm make... happy you got a chance to do stand-up. I know you've been missing it. Yeah, I did. I, I did. So, anyways, how's everybody doing? I had a wonderful, relaxing weekend. I, uh, I did the Camp Chappelle thing this past weekend out in Yellow Springs, Ohio. And uh, I had an amazing time. Got out there Wednesday. Brought the whole family um, got tested before I got on the plane, got tested afterward, you know, went out Wednesday. I wasn't even supposed to be on the show, jumped on that show. And, um, I just had a great time. It was such an amazing mix of, uh, just comedians, rappers, poets, musicians, the whole thing. And I just felt like everybody was sort of pushing each other. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I saw this rapper, I don't, I'm going to repost, uh, whatever, whatever the hell the kids do, the hashtag with the, with the at symbol, um, incredible rapper. Um, and I was glad I did not have to go on after him. (laughs) I am white enough. I don't need to be following that, that level of heat. Um, just had a great time. And I really want to thank Dave. He was so ridiculously generous to myself, my family, everybody involved. And it was so much fun to be doing stand up, getting laughs. And, and there was like no phones. Everybody's phone was locked. And, um, it was a level of freedom in stand up that I have not felt since white female comedians have started complaining. <laughs> I actually felt like, as an American, I could go on stage and say whatever I wanted, which I remember fondly. Oh, by all the way back last time, maybe six, seven years ago. Then all of a sudden, all these put upon white females. It's so hard to be a white woman in the United States of America. All of a sudden, I don't know what happened. You know, we need to make this fairer. And in the process of them making stand-up fairer, I am now not allowed to say whatever it is I want to say. (laughs) This is progressive, people. Fellow comics censoring and making you afraid to say what you want to say on stage. I I don't get it, but that's what it is. That's what it is. And now what's funny is now they're experiencing what they created and now they're tweeting that they're afraid to tweet. It's the funniest fucking thing. It's like you helped build this fucking house of horrors. Now you're going to walk away. I always use the rollerblade analogy. It always works. Rollerblading. We all did it. One homophobic joke. Everybody walks away and act like they never did it. And the ocean's just littered with all of our sins. Um, anyway. And I got to do Dave's podcast. Um, I just had a great, great time. Smoked a few too many cigars out here. And I really just saw, like, you know, I really have to address the ignorance. I think the ignorance of flyover states is, is you know, always talked about. Not saying there's not ignorance out there. Of course there is. Of course there's you got a bunch of people talking about a bunch of people that aren't even anywhere near them you know the usual shit and then people on the coast they talk down to the people you know calling flyover states flyover states you've never spent a week in one um i'm gonna tell you right now haven't been out here in ohio the level of fun that you can fucking have and the space and the fresh air 
I saw a fucking guy. He had a pickup truck with the camper shell on the back, towing a fucking uh, a motorhome. The one you have to tow. tow. It's not a motorhome. No motor, but it's a home. A home on wheels. A trailer. And then behind that, he had a fishing boat. (laughs) And it's just like, there's no way in L.A. you could... Where the fuck? That would take up half of your property. You know, motorcycles, four-wheelers. I mean, all just all kinds of just old cars and shit. Like, all I could think of out here is if I was out here, I would have a motorcycle. I could drive my, you know, my F-100 all over the place, cruising these fucking great country roads, not sitting in traffic. Beautiful lakes and rivers. I mean, I'm 100% sold. And I was like, man, Dave is doing it right. This is, it's friggin' paradise out here. And then we went, one day I took, um, my wife and kids, and uh, we went out to this place. Uh, what the hell was it called? It was like, it was Jersey something or other. Some sort of ice cream place. And Jersey, I guess, is a kind of cow. I had no idea. And we went out to this place, and the, the friggin' ice cream was so good and so fresh. It was like, it was like heroin. That, that when you took the, I got a milk. This is what I did. I got a vanilla milkshake, and I know what you're thinking. Like, oh Jesus, Bill, could you be any whiter with your plain Jane um, order there flavor? So this is well. This is what I do. Okay, this is my thing. If I'm going to a new pizza place and I want to see if they know what the fuck they're doing, I order a margarita because anybody you can hide behind your toppings if you don't quite know how to make a pizza and it can bump up the number a little bit. So I always just get the plain margarita, right? You got dough, you got sauce, you got the cheese and whatever the fuck else, you know, a little olive oil on the top, whatever the hell it is you do, right? Um, And then when I go to, to an ice cream place, I order vanilla, the plainest of the flavors, arguably, um, and if you can make that taste unbelievable, then I know that you, you guys know what the hell you're doing. And let me tell you something. They passed my little test there. So uh, we did that. We got to see some live music. Um, Questlove and a bunch of other amazing musicians just playing in the back of this antique store. It was incredible. Um, I feel like it's a little comedy festival out here. It took me back to the... I feel like... You know what? It felt like, it felt like I was in Aspen, except it was the summertime. Um, just running into people, you know, I'm going to go down the street, you run, you just run into somebody and all of a sudden, you know, you guys are grabbing a coffee. Not like I'm a big time coffee drinker, but, uh, every once in a while I'll have one and I fucked up my order. I ordered a, a, I think a cappuccino and what I wanted was an espresso. That's what I like just to have, cause I don't like the, really the taste of coffee. So I just try to do the shot and then people's like, well, that's got more fucking caffeine in it. It's like, all right, well, whatever. It's easier, you know, if you, I don't have to drink a giant one, you know? That's one of the smartest things I ever did was I never got into coffee, you know? The amount of time. Can you imagine if you were really into coffee and you were into sports and you have to sleep eight hours a day? I mean, there goes your whole life. That is your whole fucking life. Watching sports, standing in line for coffee, and then sleeping. <laughs> Um, all right. Thank you. Uh, dear Bill, I'm a 25 year old male from Seattle and a big fan of your comedy and podcast. Well, thank you. This might sound sappy, but I didn't have great dad parentheses dads growing up, uh, from abusive alcoholics to full blown sociopaths. Well, no offense to your mom, but Jesus Christ, she could really pick them, huh? Uh, There was nobody to show me how to be a man. I like what you do because you explain how you feel about something, even if it's not healthy, and then provide how you would or should actually deal with it. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, because I'm a fucking mess, dude. (laughs) I need to talk it out when it comes to uh, when it comes to the old emotions there. Um, By listening to your perspective on things, I can relate to what you're saying without feeling like some monster. And I've been able to make positive changes in my life. I deal with my anger better 
I don't have sex with hookers anymore. Well, Jesus Christ, there's two huge improvements. And I feel like I can be honest with myself and others because my issues aren't all that extreme or different. I want you to know that your work has changed my life for the better. Thank you. Jesus Christ, I'm going to save that someday for when, if and when I get in trouble for telling knock-knock jokes there. Yeah, I'll tell you the big thing I did was I told my wife I needed her help with my anger. Um, she still hasn't really done it. Um, but I think that she just she's so used to going to someplace mentally when I start flipping out that it's going to take her a while to, uh, you know, my daughter's perfect, you know. The second I start to lose it, she'll be like, she, she just in the other room, she's like, don't scream like that. <laughs> I immediately got to go, sorry, buddy. You're right. You know, go in there, give her a hug. Daddy was screaming. Dad, why, why, why do you scream? <laughs> it's just no logical answer, especially when I think about what I'm yelling about. So um, I think, you know, it really helps the woman in your life if you admit to your problem, you address it, you get it out there and say that you need help. And then you tell her that this isn't Dr. Phil where he just you just say this shit once and then I walk away and it's perceived that the problem has been fixed. I'm going to have a long time to do this, you know. And then hopefully if you're with a mature woman, which they're not easy to find. OK, there's all of this shit out there that, you know, just blows women you know, and says how fucking amazing they are and all this shit. Like, they don't have any fucking issues. But the only reason why, that just comes from the advertisers because they know that women emotionally run the relationship. And they also know that they're going to manipulate the man into spending way more money than he should be on whatever fucking holiday it is. So what they do is they just blow them and say they're never wrong, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And then they just go after the fucking guys. When the reality is, is we're both out of our fucking minds and we need each other, you know, to help one another so we, we don't go crazier, right? I don't know. That's what I would think. All right, Zimbabwean fan. Look at this. I think I'm going to go play the Zimbabwe fucking funny bone. Uh, thanks, Bill, for the stand-ups, the podcast. F is for family. Nice, the ridiculously funny late-night interviews and everything in between. By the way, I wrote all these emails this week. Uh, My friends and I absolutely enjoy your politically incorrect shit. It's a shame you've never performed in my country, but I hope I'll visit yours one day. If this corona crap dies down, uh, then attend one of your shows and hackle, he says. It's hackle, H-E-C-K-L-E, not A. All right, heckle you mercilessly just to get on your last nerve. Keep on Chimdara, Bert. Chimdara can mean sick old man. Oh, keep on Chindara. Chindara, Bert. Chindara can mean sick old man uh, My sh- in my Shona language. Thanks, man. Chindara. Chimdara, sorry. No, wait, my eyes are going. Yeah, that is an M. Chimdara. All right, look at that. Now, wait a minute. Zimbabwe, you guys weren't the ones with those crazy fucking things that you guys were blowing during the, uh, the, the, the World Cup about 10 years ago. Those <laughs> sounded like Jim Carrey and fucking uh, Dumb and Dumber. Remember when he said, you, you want to hear the most annoying sound ever? That's what those things sounded like. Um, listen, I would love to go to Africa at some point. You know what I mean? And at some point would mean uh, the point where, you know, what all the white people did over there is over. (laughs) I used to do a bit about that, how as a white dude, you got to really be careful, you know, that when I traveled, I liked going to white countries because there was going to be white people there because the second you went Latino, African or anything like that. No, I never went to Africa, but whatever. It's just like, you know that you have to look up, okay, what did white people do here? Because you're going to get, you know, and I remember I went to um, Costa Rica. And rather than reading up on it, I just sort of like did a little, you know, thought about it, even though I didn't know shit about Central America. I was like, all right, that was the conquistadors. They were from Spain. okay, and in my head, Spain. 
Spanish people were Latino rather than thinking, no, they're European. They speak Spanish. And through all these years, white people have been saying Mexicans speak Spanish. You know what I mean? I don't know. So there's all of that. And then that's why, like, when I go to Europe or whatever, and I'm watching the news in Spanish and I'm seeing a blonde haired woman speaking Spanish going, wait a minute, what the fuck's going on? I, I haven't read up on any of that. So there's all kinds of crazy shit. So I didn't know any of that shit. So I was thinking that was the conquistadors, you know, those Latino people from Europe. That's literally what I was thinking. So I go, that wasn't white people. <laughs> so um, I fucking go there and I'm getting all these dirty looks. and I'm like, what the fuck? So. I'm thinking, all right, there's got to be some sort of economic sanctions. There's got to be something that we did here. We must have, our military must have helped, you know, the guy that was going to help the corporations and not the people, the usual bullshit. And what I basically what I found is where I was staying, Dole and Chiquita Banana had farms there that they had, that they had somehow purchased and they just bought up all the land from the local farmers. And the farmers had to stay working on their former farms or something i forget how it went down and they weren't getting paid shit and chiquita and dole were taking all the fucking money and then my dumb ass shows up with like a snorkel and a brochure like hello everybody and i got all these guys down there with fucking machetes sitting there looking at me it's very uncomfortable uh having said that costa rica is beautiful you know those howler monkeys oh my god Fucking things were crazy. But I just, if you're just into like, I don't know, I took a zip line tour through, I was basically at the, the very top of the rainforest. And uh, I have to be honest with you, it's something that I would not do uh, nowadays. I did it then, but I would not do it now because I just, that fucking story of those two women who were going to go into the rainforest and decided to go in themselves and then they got fucking lost is just the fucking scariest goddamn fucking thing I can ever even think of. Um, one of one of the scariest things. So uh, I guess because it's a zip line tour, like I would be, I would just be like with a guide the entire friggin' way. Um, anyway, plowing ahead. So Zimbabwe, you know. Somebody was asking me, he's like, have you ever gone on a, on a safari, like in Africa? And I was like, no, I haven't. And I just, I don't know. I, uh, I look at those animals the same way I look at celebrities. You know what I mean? It's just like, I don't want to bother them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've been through enough, okay? They, they, they just... Just, they can't even just fucking, they can't even fuck. And there's somebody taking a picture of them, making a fucking movie of them. Same thing happens to celebrities. That's why it's always funny to me. Where, you know, when, when they show like some of these fucking celebrities' houses, right? And they'll be like, hey, he's got his own bowling alley. He's got his own movie theater. It's like, yeah, because he has to or she has to. They can't fucking go anywhere. Everybody's up their ass. And then if they get, like, aggravated after a while, then the video just shows them, like, look at him being a dick to his fans. That's the last time I go to see Backdraft fucking Fast and the Furious or whatever the fuck it is. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so as far as that, like, I love animals, but, like, I also really respect them, and I just, I just don't want to go... I just don't want to be another asshole in a Jeep driving by, you know, just being where that's, you know, we already took enough of their fucking land. Can they just chill out and kill an ostrich or whatever the hell they're supposed to be doing? Um, I don't know. But it would be fascinating. Like, I really like, like, especially all of the African animals. I mean, how do you not love lions and leopards? Leopards, I love a leopard. You got to love a leopard. Cheetahs, sort of a anorexic leopard. Of course, you got your elephants, pack of doims. Uh, hippos and rhinoceroses. I love when they go on. I love when they go at it. You know, a couple of fatties get in the ring. You know, when the big thing, what always ends up happening is somehow, you know, 
the rhino wants to get the hippo perpendicular. You know, hit him, broadside him. Like the fucking rhino blew a red light. Right as the hippo was coming in the intersection. And once he gets that fucking hippo sideways, that is fucking it. It is a wrap. Um, and also, I just think that those lions are getting less and less afraid of the cars. And they, they're st- I, there's that whole thing where like you can sit there because the, the, the lion views you as part of the car. Or the Jeep. And I think they're starting to separate it. Like I said, I saw a fucking bear open a car door, kick open a door like the fucking feds. They can ride bicycles. You know, it's nature. They're going to start learning (laughs) to survive. Um, Somebody's going to get snatched. And guess what? It's not going to be me. Um, Having said that, you know, I don't know. Oh, my God. And, and forget about all the reptiles and shit. Reptiles are just like, just they are the sociopaths of the fucking, um, of the animal world. They, they just, they don't give a fuck. Komodo dragons. They just, I mean, just heartless. You know, I don't know. There's something about a mammal, maybe because I relate to it. Um, although I do have about as much hair as a lizard. All right. Need advice on my parents. Um, I would love to get in. Cause, you know what? I actually, I know that dude was just fucking around because uh, when I went over to India and they have some of the biggest fucking ball breakers I've ever met in my life. Absolutely hilarious people. And they're right up there with like the Irish, Scottish people as far as like places I went outside of my country where people were just giving me shit. Um, I told you that. I remember the, the comics I met over there. They were trying to, hey, you should talk about this on stage. Take, you should talk about that on stage. I was doing their podcast, and then I was like, wait, do you guys talk about this on stage? And they started laughing. They were trying to get me in trouble over there. Um, it was like some comedy seller shit on the other side of the planet. So anyway, all right, plowing ahead here. Need advice on my parents. Oh, geez. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I love when people say I need advice because that gives me a chance to play my little jingle. It's time. Hey, that's me. Somebody else. All right, let's get back to it here. Um, Need advice on my parent. Oh, sorry. Just goes into the uh, the playlist there. All right. Um, Shut that off. Okay. Need advice on my parents. Hello, Billy Badass. Uh, First of all, I'm a huge fan. of. Look at all these compliments this week. I usually get fucking shit. Huge fan of the podcast and all the work that you do. Thank you. Even though it was a long time ago, I liked your acting in Breaking Bad. (laughs) What the fuck does that mean? Even though it was a long time ago, I liked your acting in Breaking Bad. I guess because when you go back in time, most of the stuff I did sucked. I don't even know what that means. Anyway, now moving on. I am writing today for advice about my parents. I grew up most of my life in the Midwest and moved to Washington, D.C. about a year ago for work. My parents are still living in the Midwest and do not seem to have much going on these days. Um, Okay. Seems like they're getting close to retiring. I'm busy with work most days and always... And I'm always out and about working out and socializing with friends. I used to love spending time with my parents and hanging out with them. But now it seems that whenever they call me, uh, they want me to work on something. I I feel is dumb and annoying, like double checking my taxes, looking at how my IRA is doing, going to uh, going to get a Corona test, even though I'm as healthy as can be registering to vote making sure I'm wearing my mask every day, et cetera. You're just being parents, man. It's not like they're asking you for money because they're at home drinking a jug of wine every night. Uh, I feel as though I never want to answer the phone because it's always negative news. Oh, I see. Okay. Whenever they do call, and I know it sounds bad, but their calls often ruin my otherwise good days. Since it's gotten so bad lately, I have thought about cutting off my ties with them. Jesus Christ. But do not think this is a good situation. Yeah, no, don't do that. 
Uh, do you have any suggestions on how to work this out with them? I want to stay in touch with them, but their constant worrying and nagging is driving me nuts. Thanks, and have a good day. Well, you need to communicate that with them. Just say, Mom, Dad, I love you guys to death. Thank you for raising me. Um, I just need to discuss our relationship. And you just talk about how you feel that it is in the way that you, you would like it. I would really enjoy if you would just call up just to say hello. Can we just talk about a game? Um, I understand that I'm always going to be your baby, so you're always going to be worrying about me. But, like, my taxes are done. I got my IRA. I ha- I'm wearing a mask. I am fine. I'm adult. I know how to take care of myself. Can, can we please talk about, you know, just call up and hang, shoot the shit, be friends, man. I would go, you know, communication. It's always, it's always the best thing. And when you communicate, you got to make sure that you're not insulting the person. You got to be, you can't, you know, I learned that. You can't just, you can't communicate. But like, you know, I just, and every fucking time you call me, it's just like, oh, why don't you do your, you can't do that. <laughs> you just have to say, you know, and I actually found myself the other day when you called thinking about not answering the phone call, which is a major red flag to me because you're my parents and I love you guys. So we obviously need to clear this part of our relationship up. I think it's an easy thing. And you know what? They're going to go back. You know, they'll be good for a couple and they'll start to go back. And then you can just be like, dad, mom, like, here we go again. Um, I think you should do that, but you should never, you should never cut your parents out of your life. All right. Um, unless it's just, you know, something, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't want to discuss the topics on why you would do that. But for what you're talking about, no, this is something that can be worked out. Um, all right. Girlfriend wants my mom to die. I mean, I just had to pause there and take that sentence in. Girlfriend wants my mom to die. Dear Billy Blue Balls. Uh, so I've been seeing this lady for almost six months now. Well, I'll tell you this right now. Reading that title, if you, if you see her for seven months, uh, you're the worst son ever. Um, we really fit well together and have grown really close. But one thing is she's got a huge problem with my ma. Uh, she thinks my mom is the most evil, selfish person in the world. Wait, and you already know that six months in? You got to pull the ripcord, buddy. And I got to say, she's made me realize that my mom can be fake and manipulative sometimes. Yep, and now she's breaking you down. You're going to have Stockholm Syndrome soon. You need to get out of this. But she recently said she wishes my mom was dead, and I just froze. I don't wish that at all. I know she has her problems, but like, holy tits, that was over the line, especially since she knows that I really only had my mom when my dad left us when I was a kid. Yeah, you got to dump. This This woman's a piece of shit. And she, everything she's accusing your mother of, dude, she's doing to you. She's manipulative. And now she's fucking with your brain. And you know what? Rather than just kind of going down the field, taking two yards here, three yards, she threw the fucking bomb. I wish your mom was dead. She went for the fucking end zone. She went for the kill shot, right? Incomplete. Was not caught, and you just froze. You slapped it out of the fucking air like a shutdown corner, right? And now you know what to do. He goes, I don't know. Oh, I don't know what to do, Bill. I feel like I'm caught between these two significant people in my life right now, and it's making me crazy. Hopefully you see this and have a nice fucking day. Yeah, buddy. I mean, you're six months in to this relationship, and she just said she wishes your mother was dead. Okay? That, who, she's a fucking psycho. She's a fucking piece of shit. The woman you're dating is a fucking piece of shit. No one should ever say that. 20 years into a marriage with the worst mother-in-law ever. I get it. I get it. But even then, you got to be, you got to say, I can't say this. This is this person's mom. The fact that she said that, dude, you know, judgment for the defendant. (laughs) You, yeah, dump her. Dump her. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. I mean, what in the fuck could she possibly be doing that would warrant that statement? And this is your six months in. She's supposed to still be pretending that she's a cool person. You're supposed to still be pretending that every time for the rest of your life, you're going to pull the chair out when she goes to sit down. You know, 
she's just starting to show you who she is, and she said, I wish your mom was dead. Just thank you, lucky stars, that you didn't fucking marry this chick, you didn't have kids with her, and all of this shit, because, you, you know, what, what do you think is going to happen? Eventually, if she's not fucking happy in a relationship with you, and you guys are married, you got kids, and your lives are all entangled, and all of a sudden, she starts wishing you were dead. Huh? And then out of nowhere, she wants to cook for you every night and everything has an almond aftertaste. Yeah, get rid of her. That is a fucking, that is completely unacceptable um, statement. And you're a child of divorce, so you probably don't have the boundaries that you need to have. And that boundary, that is a, a boundary that was crossed and she cannot cross back over. That is some Benedict Arnold shit and she needs to walk the plank. Good day, sir. Um, <laughs> just my gut feeling. All right, overrated slash underrated. Underrated. Having a plan for your funeral. I 100% agree that. Agree that? Agree with that. <clears throat> Fuck. All right. Hey, Billy Ballbag. Um, I was listening to the cast uh, backs on the Thursday afternoon. I was listening to the cast back on the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast from last week. I've turned 28 last week, and I've already known my funeral plans down to the finer details for the past 10 years. Bit of background. I grew up in my childhood household with my grandmother, a now 93-year-old lady who was brought up in her childhood in England during World War II. Oh, so she's tough as nails. Morbid topics like death since I was young were never far off the table. So for sure, I think we're one of the minority who can face the ultimate guarantee in this life, death. Uh, My friends think I'm weird when I tell them if a song has changed, uh, what what I want played as the curtains close. Cremation all the way. I mean, in another hundred years, who's coming to see my headstone with the toothbrush and some bleach to see my name through the moss and the weeds? Uh, Anyway, or what party song I want on entrance to my wake to lighten the mood? Music. You know what? I had a uh, relative die, and he picked all the music, and it was really cool. And and I, I got to see the love that he had for the woman in his life and his kids and all that by the music that he chose. I thought it was really cool. So I think this is all cool. Entrance to the crematorium, uh, Elvis Presley and American trilogy. I don't think I know that song. Uh, guest exiting cremation, Elvis Presley. If I can dream from the NBC 68 comeback special, dude, this is the shit Guest entering the wake. The cult, she sells sanctuary. (laughs) This should be a fucking thing. DJ music during wait. 70s, 80s, rock, Motown, cheese, room classics only. Uh, Song, whilst ashes are scattered over the snow-filled mountains somewhere in Europe. Fleetwood Mac, landslide. Uh, Assets and will, all my collections of sets Set list from concerts. Sam, that's his brother. Uh, photography equipment. Donate to a local college for students to use. Laptop is going to Stuart, his best friend. Trust him to dispose of anything inappropriate and keep everything from my photography traveling the world. Car, Mazda Miata, MK3. To his buddy Dan, friend who was an absolute petrol head, hoping he would tune it up in his workshop and enjoy it till he left it in a bumping heap on a track uh, on a track day uh catering fish finger sandwiches and fries with every sauce from tomato to brown sauce to suit everyone's unique acquired taste longtime fan yet to be in the same country as you at the same time to see you in person one day soon when this is all over and done with uh hope you the whaff and kids stay safe roll on Season five of Efforts for Family. I think that's really cool. You know, my wife's been giving me shit because I said I wanted to be cremated. She's like, no, we got to have burial plots next to each other. So, um, 
I don't know. I didn't think I would. Oh, Jesus. You got to play highway to hell when you're fucking lowering in a coffin into the ground. <laughs> Ba-da-da-da. Da-da-da. Um, yeah, I think about that type of stuff. I don't know what I would have. I would just like it to be a um, like more of a party, more of a celebration of my life. And I would also like, hopefully, that I've said all the things that I need to say. Certainly, I know I've done it to all my uh, my family. I know that. Um, yeah. That's what you just want to think. Man, what a great fucking guy. I'm going to miss that guy. You know, but we had, you know, so many great times. That's what happened. My buddy Wayne passed. You know, we were all sad and crying and all that. And then we just started telling stories and just laughing our asses off. And all the pictures came in. And it's just him just always being like the life of the party, which is never a downer. So I'm hoping that that, oh, Jesus, never a downer. Jesus Christ, let's let's not get too crazy, Bill. Um yeah, I don't know if I'll pass the never being a downer test. My buddy Wayne did, though. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that's a great thing to do. Because um, you do, you never know. You do never know. And um, I also think that if you pick it like that and it's really specific, it is sort of this last, this bonus interaction that they get with you that they know that these songs mean this much. It's a way for you to communicate with them from beyond the grave, Um, (laughs) beyond the ashes. Uh, 